Chapter 761. However, he hid his strength and did not show it at all. Old Master Woods had changed his opinion of Ethan a long time ago, but he couldn't say it out loud. Ashley raised her wine glass and said with a smile, Grandpa, no matter what, we have to thank Uncle Riss for what happened today, right? It's all because Uncle gave us a chance to turn things around. He also allowed us to defeat the Adams family today. Dwayne quickly smiled and said, Not at all, not at all. It's all thanks to Old Master's own abilities. Otherwise, how could we have settled today's matter? We should show our respect to Old Master. We should thank both of you, Sally smiled and said. Kinsey and Ethan also raised their glasses, but everyone just smiled at them and did not take them seriously. Old Master Woods could tell that Ethan was trying to keep his identity a secret, so he didn't say anything. Coincidentally, Ethan received a video call from Sam. He whispered a few words to Kinsey, apologized to everyone, picked up his phone, and left. Kinsey could clearly feel everyone's attitude toward Ethan at the banquet. She was even more determined to work harder and earn more money in the future. She wanted to stand at the top of the industry and change everyone's opinion of him. Seeing her slightly pursed lips, Sally looked at her kindly. Kinsey, are you sure you're going to be with this man? Tyler heard this question and looked up at Kinsey. Yeah, is there a problem? Kinsey asked. Just don't want you to suffer. Forget it. There's nothing much to talk about when it comes to dating. But when it comes to marriage, you have to be careful. Only when your families are compatible will you be happy, Sally said emistly. Although Ellen didn't want Kinsey to be with her son, now that Dwayne had made a contribution, she felt that she had the status and position to educate Kinsey. She said, Kinsey, your mother is right. With your status, it's best to find a young master from a wealthy family. A man like your boyfriend is superficial. How can he give you a happy life in the future? He'll introduce you to a few men someday. I guarantee that they'll all be better than him. Thank you, but it's all right. Kinsey directly rejected. However, Ellen was unwilling to give up. To young girls like you, love is the most important thing. You only regret it after suffering a loss. However, it would be too late by then. Also, it's time for you to let go of your profession. I's better for young girls to be in a more professional line of work. It's not becoming of ladies from noble families to show their faces outside all the time. Let's not talk about anything else. Tyler has a few friends who do business at home. I can introduce them to you. Mom. Tyler frowned and interrupted her. I didn't say anything wrong. I'm doing this for Kinsey's own good. What's there not to say? You can't rely on love for a lifetime. Also, when those poor guys are middle-aged, they'll easily abandon their wives and look for young women. This is also an open secret. Aunt, Kinsey interrupted her. I don't have any plans to date now. You don't have to worry about me. Aren't you in love? Ellen asked in disbelief. Chapter 762. Kinsey smiled and tucked her thick hair behind her ear. She said neither gently nor forcefully, that's right. Ethan and I are going to get married and spend the rest of our lives together. We have no intention of dating anyone else. As for my profession, I don't think there's anything bad about it. We're now in a highly civilized society. Women are no longer limited by the ancient times when they're not allowed to leave their homes. They have their own choices and preferences. They can do whatever they want. This is the freedom that society and the country gave us. It's our freedom to choose who we want to marry and build a relationship with. I won't choose anyone else other than Ethan. Ellen pouted when she heard Kinsey. If you're with a poor man, you'll suffer. Aunt, you're wrong. Ethan and I have both our hands and feet. We have legitimate careers and can earn enough money for us to spend. What else is there to be dissatisfied about? Must we have innumerable wealth before it can be called happiness? Can't we be happy just by relying on our own incomes? I don't think I'm suffering living like this. On the contrary, I really enjoy my current life, Kinsey replied calmly. Ellen continued to pout, clearly disagreeing with Kinsey's words. Kinsey did not expect her to agree. However, she had to protect Ethan. Especially when Ethan wasn't around. This was her husband, so of course, she had to protect him. Seeing Kinsey like this, Robin and Sally were worried. 
Ashley, on the other hand, could not wait for Kinsey to stick to her own views. It was not strange for a woman who had never been beaten up by society to be so naive. However, after being beaten up so many times, Kinsey was still so naive. Ashley could only wish her good luck. The light in Tyler's eyes was extinguished bit by bit. Kinsey had such abundant feelings and protections for another man, but it was not for him. Kinsey picked up her glass of red wine and asked Ellen with a smile, Do you know how one lives to be 90 years old? How? Ellen asked reflexively. Kinsey curled her lips into a smile. By not caring about other people's business. Aunt, let me give you a toast. What she meant was that the meddlesome ones would die sooner and was secretly mocking Ellen for interfering too much. Kinsey's bright smile forced Ellen to accept her toast. Outside the door, Ethan had already finished his video call with Sam. Hearing his woman defend him, he felt his heart soften. This was the feeling of being loved. Kinsey loved him. There was no better experience. Ethan walked in. Kinsey reached out to hold his hand and smiled gently. You're back. Yes. Ethan sat down calmly. Grandpa, since we've already finished dinner, how about Tyler and I play a few rounds of chess with you? Ashley asked with a smile. Old Master Woods maintained the habits of many elderly people, and Ashley was very much to his liking. She took this opportunity to pull Tyler into her own camp and also beat Kinsey and Ethan. Old Master Woods wanted to have Ethan stay and talk to him more to see if he was someone he could entrust Kinsey to. Chapter 763 Even though he had already guessed that his identity wasn't simple, Old Master Woods wasn't someone who cared about family background and status. What was rare was one's character. Ashley took out the chessboard and smiled. Kinsey, do you know how to play? Kinsey shook her head. I don't. You guys go ahead. That's too bad. Grandpa likes to play chess very much. If you know how to play it, you can spend more time with him, Ashley said with a smile. Why don't Tyler and I teach you? Tyler is a professional. He has won several international competitions. She kept mentioning Old Master Woods, wanting to imply that Kinsey did not know many things about him and was not filial. Old Master Woods smiled and said, forget it. It's fine even if Kinsey doesn't know. Young people these days shouldn't be bored to death by these old antiques. Tyler looked at Kinsey expectantly. Ethan actually knew from the start that this man had ideas toward Kinsey. He could also guess that the Woods family wanted to matchmake Tyler and Kinsey. That was why Kinsey brought him here today to directly reject these arrangements and plans. However, Tyler clearly had not given up. Every time Kinsey spoke, his eyes would brighten. Kinsey was clearly rejecting him, but he did not give up. It looked like he had to do it himself. Ethan tilted his head and looked at Kinsey. Why don't you play around with Grandpa? But I don't know how to play. Do you? Kinsey asked. I don't know how to play either, Ethan said seriously. But why don't we let Mr. Riss explain it to us? Seeing that he was interested, Kinsey nodded and said, that's good. Once we learn, we can play with Grandpa. When Tyler heard that Kinsey wanted to learn, he was instantly interested. He nodded and said, I can teach you guys. Then, he explained the rules to Kinsey and Ethan in detail. After a while, Ethan nodded. I understand. Before Tyler could finish, he heard Ethan say that he knew how to do it. He was stunned for a moment and smiled. Mr. Hunt, you understand how to play it already. Edo, Ethan said calmly. There was no hint of joking in his cold features. The other elders couldn't help but smile. Ethan, you learned this before, right? No, Ethan answered truthfully. Everyone laughed out loud. Dwayne and Ellen thought to themselves, this poor guy is really too much. Seeing that he's being looked down upon, he wants to prove himself. It's easy to learn chess, but it's hard to master it. Even if he says he understands how to play it now, he'll immediately be exposed. It'll be really funny. How did Kinsey bring back such a boyfriend? Robin and Sally saw how arrogant Ethan was. They could not help but worry about Kinsey's choice. Only old Master Woods calmly watched this scene. The man in front of him was unfathomable. Many things had already surpassed his imagination. Actually, chess is quite easy to learn. Ashley seemed to agree with Ethan on the surface, but she was ruthlessly exposing him. But mastering the rules is hard. 
it might not be as easy as it seems when you actually play it. Tyler, what do you think? Ellen laughed. We'll know if that's the case. Why don't we have a real battle? Tyler looked at Ethan with a burning gaze. Mr. Hunt, is that okay? Let's play around. Chapter 764. We can also have some prizes. Those who win will be rewarded. How about that? Ashley deliberately wanted to make Tyler look good. She wanted to make Kinsey look bad, so she fanned the flames. Tyler immediately said, sure, we can have a bet. Mr. Hunt, what do you think about it? Why don't you tell me what you want to bet on? Ashley asked with a smile. Tyler didn't wait for Ethan to agree and said, if I win, I want to date Kinsey. Everyone was shocked by his words. No one expected that Tyler, who was silent the whole night, had actually been restraining his anger. Ellen couldn't help but exclaim, Tyler, how can you do this? She didn't want her son to be with Kinsey. Tyler stared at Ethan. Do you dare, Mr. Hunt? The provocation was very strong. Actually, with his rank, he was basically the champion in the entire country. It was unfair for him to challenge Ethan. However, if he missed this opportunity, he would no longer have the chance to date Kinsey. Therefore, even if the conditions were not moral, he had to grab this chance. Ashley's face instantly turned hot. She had done everything she could for Tyler's sake and to make him perform well in front of her grandfather so that he could suppress Ethan. Who knew that his bet was for Kinsey? Everything seemed so ridiculous. Ashley was completely speechless. If you don't dare to, pretend that I didn't say anything. Tyler narrowed his eyes. He was both disappointed and reluctant. Kinsey did not expect this man to make such an outrageous request. Besides, Ethan had never played chess before. Although she believed that he could do anything and if he said that he could do it, then he definitely could. This bet, Kinsey looked at Ethan. Ethan said calmly, Kinsey is not a reward for a bet. I won't use her as a bet. Old Master Woods was very satisfied with these words. To Ellen, Ethan was admitting defeat. She smiled and said, then forget it. Our Tyler is a master of chess. He even participated in the national championship. Even if he wins, it'd be unfair. Lose. That was impossible. Ethan looked at Tyler and said, there's no need for Kinsey to be the bet, then. Let's use ourselves as the bet. Whoever loses will not be able to see Kinsey again. If the loser ever meets Kinsey by chance, he has to avoid her. Heavens. Everyone was shocked. Old Master Wood stood up. Ethan's bet was too big. The loser would have to stop seeing Kinsey and even avoid her. If Ethan lost, it meant that he would have to leave Kinsey forever. He actually made such a bet just to get rid of a competitor. He was overbearing. Furthermore, Ethan had just learned how to play chess while Tyler was already comparable to the national champion. Even if the two of them were evenly matched, no one could guarantee that Ethan would win. Ethan's move was both impulsive and risky. Ellen thought to herself, this Ethan really can't keep his cool. He just looks cocky. He really doesn't have any masculinity. What's going on with Ethan? Ashley thought to herself, isn't he being too reckless? He's going to lose. What if he loses? I can't let Tyler be with Kinsey. Chapter 765. She didn't want Tyler to accept the challenge because it was obvious that Ethan would lose. Was Ethan trying to use this matter to get rid of Kinsey? Tyler didn't expect Ethan to make such a big bet. After a moment of joy, he said, deal. No one believed that Ethan could do it. Except for Old Master Woods and Kinsey. Old Master Woods could see how far Ethan was willing to go for Kinsey. That was good too. He would just get rid of this love rival. Kinsey looked up at him and reached out to pull his arm. You can't lose. Anyway, I won't agree to not seeing you. Ethan rubbed her head gently and sat down in front of the chessboard. Tyler also sat down. Dwayne and Ellen didn't think that their son would lose. Ethan wouldn't be better than Tyler. But now, they were all hoping that their son would lose. After a while, a lot of black and white chess pieces were placed on the chessboard. Everyone's gaze was on the board. Ashley, Mr. Riss, and Mrs. Riss could understand the game a little at first, but gradually, they could not understand the complicated moves. They were conflicted. They didn't want Ethan to win, but they didn't want Tyler to lose either. 
Meanwhile, Grandfather Woods was sipping his tea and looking at the board while stroking his beard. He nodded repeatedly. Soon, Ethan made another move. Tyler frowned deeply, while Ethan's expression was relaxed. Sometimes, he would grab Kinsey's hand or eat a mouthful of fruit. In the eyes of Ashley and the rest, this was the difference between a top student and a bad student. A good student would think hard because they knew that the questions were difficult, but a bad student could not understand them anyway, so they decided to just forego everything. Happiness was the most important thing to them. Tyler's hands started to tremble, and his brows were knitted even tighter together. Finally, he put down the chess piece and said, I admit defeat. Thanks for letting me win, Ethan said politely. Tyler's face darkened. He could tell that Ethan still had some strength left. Even if he challenged Ethan again, he would lose terribly. How did this man do it? How is this possible? How is this possible? Ellen and Ashley were both shocked that Tyler would say something like that. Although they did not wish for him to win, he actually lost just like that. That was shocking enough. Ethan was just a newbie. How did he crush this top expert? Kinsey revealed a smile, as if saying, I knew my husband could do it. Tyler stood up with a hint of loneliness on his face. He looked deeply at Kinsey, picked up his jacket, stood up, and walked out. This, this, Ellen could not believe that her son had been crushed. Old Master Woods smiled, it's common for young people to win and lose when they play. However, Ethan is really quite good. Is this really your first time playing? Tobey seen others play it before, but I only learned the rules today. Ethan nodded. Old Master Woods was a little satisfied with him. With his memory and comprehension ability, it wasn't an exaggeration to call him a genius. Chapter 766. Old Master Woods sighed in his heart. With such a brain, how could Ethan be an ordinary person? Duane and Ellen's expressions were a little ugly. Ashley's was even uglier. How despicable. They were actually taken advantage of by such a shabby guy. Kinsey held Ethan's hand even tighter. It would be a lie to say that she was not nervous just now. Now, she still felt a lingering fear. Not wanting to stay any longer, Kinsey bade farewell to everyone and left with Ethan. The elders were still in disbelief. Kinsey and Ethan walked out and turned around. With a cabedon movement, she trapped Ethan between the wall and her arm. But damn it, Kinsey was already so tall yet she was still a head shorter than him. Her cabedon action immediately lost its imposing manner and only had a cool appearance. When Ethan saw these actions, he just found her adorable. He looked down and smiled gently at the woman's face. Next time, you're not allowed to use me as a bet. Do you know how scared I was just now? Although I know my husband is omnipotent, there's always a chance. Ethan pressed her head against his chest. How can I bear to use you as a bet? I was betting on myself. You can't do that either. If you can't see me anymore, what's the difference between that and me not being able to see you? Kinsey refused to give up. Anyway, I won't allow it next time. Um, no more, Ethan said obediently. You're not allowed to say anything like that. You're not allowed to leave me, you're not allowed to not see me, you're not allowed to. Kinsey said a long string of words in one breath. The overwhelming sense of insecurity in her heart just now made her want to vent. Ethan nodded seriously and said lovingly, okay, okay. I won't. Kinsey went on her tiptoes and kissed his lips, sealing these words between their lips. Ethan hugged the woman in satisfaction. How could he bear to leave her? With her around, his whole world was different. When Angela asked Kinsey to repair the jade bracelet, Kinsey sent a photo of it to Justin and almost forgot about it. But one day, Justin replied, Kinsey, the bracelet you mentioned should be able to be repaired, but it needs some raw materials. What do you need? I'll send it over. We need the same or similar raw materials as the jade bracelet. This was difficult for Kinsey. Where could she get these things? She immediately asked Angela. I need to see if I have it, Angela said. Kinsey, I've really troubled you. This bracelet means a lot to my mother. She thought for a long time about repairing it, but she couldn't find anyone. If you can really repair it, I wonder how happy she'll be. I might not be able to help you. Don't thank me yet. 
After Angela searched around, she told Kinsey, I'm really sorry. I can't find any similar raw materials. However, I heard that someone recently got a batch of raw jade in the capital. I want to go there to take a look. Kinsey, can you and your friend accompany me there? Please. All right, I'll go with you since I'm resting tomorrow. But I'll have to ask my friend if he can go. Angela sent a smiley face. That's great. Thank you. Chapter 767. Kinsey asked Justin and didn't expect Justin to be very interested. He sent a few exclamation marks in succession. I'll definitely go. He was so agitated that those who did not know would think that he was scolding someone. The next day, Angela came to look for Kinsey. Kinsey came down with a bag of clothes and stuffed it into the car. Take off your clothes. What do you want to do? Angela's face turned red as if she had heard something incredible. Didn't you say we're going to see the raw materials? I heard that the scene can be quite chaotic. It's obviously inconvenient for women like us to go. Kinsey said, since it's inconvenient, we'll change into male outfits. Angela realized that she was wrong, she thought. However, the blush on her face did not subside because she realized that she liked Kinsey. She did not reject or was against any intimate contact with her. Wait, what was she thinking? Kinsey handed the clothes to her and said, I don't really know your size, so I can only roughly estimate it. I got you some male clothes from the crew. Try them first. Okay. Angela took it. She was a little flustered because she hadn't worn it before. She turned around to look at Kinsey. She had changed quickly. After putting on a wig, she looked exactly like a young and handsome man. Angela's face was slightly red as if she had seen this appearance somewhere before. Finally, she was enlightened. Did you shoot a game commercial before? Are you the one called Frank? Yeah, you can tell. So you were the one who played the role in that commercial. I was wondering why there was no news of Frank in the entertainment industry. So it turns out to be you. Yes, it's me. Kinsey reached out to help her button up her shirt. It's almost done. When you put on your hat, you'll be able to pass off as a guy. Angela was the daughter of a rich family. She usually followed the family rules strictly. She had always followed all kinds of rules. She found today's events especially interesting, she was so excited that her face was red. She followed Kinsey and asked, where are we going now? I got my manager to rent a car for me. After picking up my friend, I'll go to the place you mentioned. Angela found it even more interesting and quickly followed. After getting the car, Kinsey sent Justin a WeChat message. After Justin received it, he went downstairs and couldn't find Kinsey for a long time. Hey, over here. Kinsey waved her hand and called out to Justin. Justin opened his mouth in surprise and walked over. When he saw that it was really Kinsey, he got into the car. After he got into the car, he did not say anything and kept his mouth shut. He acted like a girl. So, where are we going today? Kinsey asked. Angela said, I asked a friend to ask around. In a raw stone trading center in the suburbs of the capital, we can buy good jade there to help my mother repair her jade bracelet. But I don't know how to buy it or how to do it. I've been there with a friend, but I'm not too familiar with this either. Kinsey recalled that she had previously followed Nick to this raw stone trading center. However, she did not participate in it, so they would have to rely on Justin this time. Justin lowered his head and typed on his phone. After a while, Kinsey received a WeChat message from him. Angela, help me read it. Kinsey was driving, so she handed her phone to Angela. Chapter 768. Angela glanced at Justin through the rearview mirror. He was a nice guy. What a pity, he was a mute. U8 is produced from raw stones. However, the stones in the raw stones trading center are not sold casually. People buy stones there through gambling. No one knows what's inside the stones. Even the most advanced equipment can't detect any good jade. Therefore, they're all interested in gambling. Some people might be able to spend a small amount of money to buy raw stones that contain high-quality jade while others would spend a huge sum of money only to buy a lousy stone. This is how random it can be. Winning and losing is really up to your luck. When it came to his own professional knowledge, Justin was confident. After Angela finished reading the message, she looked confused. 
Then how are we going to buy it? Justin sent another message. Depends on luck. Angela read it out loud and said, does it really only depend on luck? She sighed softly. It was up to luck, huh? Anyway, this was the last resort. Her mother's bracelet had been sent to many people, but they all said that it could not be repaired. Now that there was a chance, it was better than nothing. If it weren't for the fact that the bracelet was so important that she wanted to repair it, she wouldn't have thought of buying raw materials to do it. Justin sent another message. The raw stones are all very expensive, easily costing hundreds of thousands of yuan per piece. There's a possibility there won't be anything when you open it or it's just a simple stone. Even Angela, who was born into a prestigious family, couldn't help but click her tongue. Buying a stone for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was no wonder that those people could easily fall into poverty. Then how are we going to buy it today? Angela asked. What if we can't get any jade? What if we get a lot of jade but it may not be the same jade that can be used to repair my mom's bracelet? This was indeed a problem. Kinsey wanted to ask this too. Justin continued to send WeChat messages. I'll try my best. Kinsey said, then we might have to go to the venue to take a look first. Angela took out a card and said, how about this? I have 1 million yuan in this card. I'll use all my pocket money to buy it. We'll leave after spending it. Whatever happens, I'll accept my fate. She never liked to spend money recklessly. Even though she was born into a wealthy family, she had her own bottom line. Even though her family gave her a lot more pocket money, she only used some. When she was studying at university, she often worked part-time to earn money. Therefore, her heart still ached when she took out this 1 million yuan. Kinsey could tell that she was reluctant and said, how about this? I'll pay 100,000 yuan and you'll pay 100,000 yuan. Let's not buy a big piece of raw stone and just do pickup. If there's something in the stone, we'll split it evenly. If there's nothing, we'll go home. What's a pickup? Angela asked curiously. You'll know when we get there. Kinsey revealed a smile. In the past, she had followed Nick to the trading center. Because she was cautious, Kinsey did not buy anything. She just wanted to take a look. Since she had such an opportunity today, she would go have some fun. The moment the car arrived, Justin's entire body was glowing, he seemed to have come alive all of a sudden. Chapter 769 Justin was like a shy girl just now, but now he had a confident glow on him. The last time Kinsey saw him like this was when he was repairing the crack on Donna's jade. After parking the car, Kinsey and Angela walked forward hand in hand. Justin quickly followed. There were countless stalls in the entire trading center. Each stall displayed all sorts of raw materials, and many people were crowding around to watch. Because the center didn't open for a long time every year, every time it opened, it would be packed. Everyone wanted to come here to search for gold. Most of the people present were of a certain age. There were very few young people like Kinsey and the rest. When they saw the intimate looks that Kinsey and Angela exchanged, many people couldn't help but laugh softly. Clearly, they looked down on gay youths like them. Angela followed beside Kinsey and looked at the unassuming piles of stones in front of her. Seeing the price on them, she couldn't help but say, this piece costs hundreds of thousands. That's too much. It's not a lot at all. You haven't seen everything yet. Some of the prices here are even more exaggerated, Kinsey said softly. Have you been here before? Today been here with other friends, but I didn't buy anything, Kinsey said. Today, they would probably have to rely on Justin. Justin followed behind them. His eyes were filled with light, and his expression was solemn as he observed everything very seriously. Kinsey said to him, we have 200,000 yuan. Since we'll be relying on you, you can buy whatever you want. If it doesn't result in anything, then forget it. If you get something, then the three of us will split it equally. Any objections to that, Angela? Save no objections. Angela nodded. Kinsey did not think about what good things she could buy here. She just hoped they could repair Angela's bracelet. Justin shook his head vigorously to express his disagreement. Kinsey looked down at her phone. The message said, even if I get something, I don't want it. I didn't pay for it. 
But we're counting on you for this, Kinsey said, just treat it as my and Angela's investment in you. Yes, treat it as our investment. Angela was also very straightforward. But I still owe you a lot, Justin typed again. Before he could finish, Kinsey interrupted him. Don't be so wishy-washy. Justin's face turned red and he could only agree to do as Kinsey said. The three of them walked around to look at various stalls. However, it was obvious that they couldn't even buy the smallest piece with 200,000 yuan. Kinsey couldn't afford to pay for it in private as she was afraid of hurting Angela's pride. Furthermore, buying stones was too risky so she couldn't spend too much either. Justin looked at every stone piece by piece. From his eyes, it could be seen that he was very professional. Kinsey recalled his previous craftsmanship and abilities. She believed that he could get the materials to repair the bracelet. However, before a stone was opened, even scientists with the most advanced instruments could not verify what was inside, how could a human's naked eye completely see through the stones? If there was really a way to see what was inside the stone, it wouldn't be called stone gambling. Kinsey tilted her head and said to Angela, if we see small stones that are cheap, we can buy them for fun and use them as decorations. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Angela had fallen in love with Kinsey at first sight, so she had no objections to what she said. Chapter 770 However, even though the three of them were only here to play, many people still looked at them with disdain when they saw how young they were. Young people should just go out and play. Don't join in on our fun here. Soon, the three of them were pushed to the side. The three of them could only go to a small booth. There were fewer people here, so there was room. Because every stone was expensive, there were many people who looked at them but only a few people bought something. A few people were gathered around a huge rock that weighed dozens of kilograms, staring at it. Because there was a crack on the big rock, it revealed what looked like green jade inside. Many people were very interested in it. When Justin saw this stone, he also could not help moving forward. Kinsey and Angela followed him. When they saw that this stone actually cost 500,000, they couldn't help but be slightly speechless. It was just a stone. The owner's surname was Foster, and he was saying loudly, look, there's already a bit of green in this stone. Who knows, it might be a large piece of jade and you'll become rich overnight. Although the price is expensive, if it's a good piece of jade, your profit will be a few hundred times more, right? 500,000 is no big deal to big shots. His words clearly showed that he was trying to sell to the rich. The people around him only looked around and did not speak. Justin went forward and carefully touched the stone. He looked at it carefully as if he really wanted to buy it. Kinsey said in a low voice, if you want it, I'll buy it for you. Consider it your reward for helping me repair the jade the last time. Justin hurriedly shook his head. As Justin had gone forward to take a look, other people also came over to take a closer look at this stone. A big-bellied man said, 500,000 yuan, I want it. If this stone really produces jade, then I'll be rich. I'll give it a try. When Boss Foster heard that, he laughed and said, sure, 500,000 yuan. Take it. A short man next to him took a few glances and finally said, 550,000. I want it. Betting on a stone can sometimes be used as a method to block others from getting the opportunity. 600,000. The fat man continued to bid. Initially, no one was interested in the stone. However, because there were people bidding for it, its value increased exponentially. Boss Foster rubbed his hands happily. Naturally, the more people bid for the stone, the better. Justin took a few glances and seemed a little reluctant. Kinsey wanted to buy it for him, but he refused to accept it. He was practically penniless. Kinsey was concerned about his pride and did not say anything more. The short man nudged Justin. Poor kid, stay away from me. Don't affect my fortune. 700,000 yuan, I'll open this stone. Fatty shouted, 780,000, give it to me. Because of the high price, the people around gathered and looked at this scene excitedly. They were even more invested in this than buying a rock themselves. In the end, the two of them bargained for a while before the fatty finally decided to buy the stone for 1.5 million. The short man shook his head. 
It seemed that he was unwilling to fork out the money. He was also afraid that it was not worth it to buy a stone that could end up being a lousy one, so he withdrew from the bidding. Boss Foster smiled and asked the fat man, Sir, do you want to open it now or take it home? Chapter 771 Open it now. You've already bought it. What's the point of not opening it now? Are you going to leave it at home as a decoration? The onlookers jeered. That's right. Let's open it right now and let everyone broaden their horizons. Open it on the spot. Angela had always been an obedient girl. She was also waiting excitedly to see the scene unfold. The fat man handed his card to Boss Foster and paid. More and more people gathered around, wanting to see whether the fat man would become rich overnight or if his money would just go down the drain. Because the stone was very heavy, Boss Foster had to find a few employees to carry it out. The huge stone probably weighed more than 10 kilograms. Someone said, Sir, are you planning to cut it yourself? Angela didn't know what was so special about it and asked excitedly, Kinsey, can you personally cut it? Yes, there are some old masters here who can help cut open the stone. They are familiar with the stones and will stop when they see the jade. Therefore, they can cut open the stone as much as possible without destroying the jade inside. If you bought it with your own money, you can find an old master to cut it for you, but you can also cut it yourself. Many are willing to cut the stone themselves, Kinsey explained. Angela clicked her tongue in wonder. Wasn't this too fun? She had never experienced anything like this before. It was really an eye-opener. I wonder if he'll cut it himself. Angela was full of anticipation. The surrounding onlookers also hoped that the fat man who bought the stone would cut it himself. Generally speaking, when customers cut it themselves, they were all bold and decisive. Whether there was a precious stone inside or not, they would just simply cut it open. If the old masters cut it, while they did a fine job, they always dawdled. There was nothing exciting to see. The lads lifted the stone up and placed it beside the cutter. The fat man rolled up his sleeves. It seemed like he was going to do it himself. There were cheers all around. Good, good. You're so manly. Cut it yourself. I wonder if you'll get anything good out of this. A stone worth more than a million yuan. You need some jade to recoup your losses. The fat man picked up the cutter, aimed it at the stone, and began to cut. Everyone watched without blinking. The cutting machine and the stone triggered bursts of sparks. Kinsey took a few steps back. As the cutting machine cut down the stone, the sweat on the fat man's face kept seeping out. Actually, cutting didn't require much strength, but the anxiety in his heart was obvious. After a loud crash, the stone split into two and fell on both sides. Everyone simultaneously let out a regretful cry. Aia, what a pity. What a waste. There's nothing. This stone had cost more than a million. With one slash, it turned out there was nothing. As everyone lamented, the fat man started to sweat even more. It was more than a million yuan. Many ordinary people might not even be able to earn that much money in ten years. However, one cut and everything was gone. Boss Foster didn't look too good either. The customers were all particular about good signs. This was a stone that he had sold. If the customer didn't get anything out of the stone today, then his shop's business wouldn't be good anymore. Chapter 772. He waved his hand and directed the clerk to help the fat man carry the two pieces of stone back under the cutting machine. The remaining two pieces were quite big. He could cut them a few more times. That should be fine. This kind of large stone could always be cut a few more times. The fat man held the cutting machine and aimed at half of it. He started cutting again. Angela nervously held Kinsey's hand and said, I wonder if anything will happen this time. Kinsey said in a low voice, that's hard to say. That's why it's best not to involve yourself in things like gambling. If you have to, you can only gamble for fun and keep your losses within your means. Yeah, you're right. Angela nodded seriously. As the stone was cut open, the fat man wiped his sweat again. Clearly, there was still nothing. After that, he cut a few more times until the whole stone turned into more than ten pieces of small stone. There was nothing green anymore. His one million yuan was quickly reduced to smoke. People were sighing, watching the show, and saying all sorts of things. 
One of them was an old man who seemed to be a regular here. He pointed at the small pieces of stone and said, I'll give you twenty thousand. I'll buy two of the small pieces. Kinsey said to Angela, this is what it means to pick up scraps. Usually, when a stone is cut to this size, many people would not cut it anymore because even if they do, they won't be able to get anything else. At such times, other people would appear to buy these scraps. The prices were very cheap, and occasionally, one would find jade inside. However, the probability was lower than when one bought large stones. But fortunately, they were still cheap. Many people would buy these to play with at times like this. Angela nodded. No wonder there were so many people gathered here. Apart from some spectators, there were also people who picked up scraps. The fat man had been cutting for so long that he was already disheartened and no longer had the motivation to cut. When he heard that the old man wanted to buy the scraps, he said, 50,000, I'll give you two pieces for 50,000. 30,000. 30,000 is the limit. The old man bargained. The fat man seemed to be planning to sell a little to recoup his losses, so he agreed on 30,000. Soon after, an ordinary-looking female boss also spent 30,000 to buy two small stones. The old man and the female boss cut open all the broken stones. There was a pile of broken stones. Another 60,000 yuan had gone to waste. The old man and the female boss shrugged their shoulders. They were used to this kind of situation. This business really looked like it was burning money. In less than half an hour, so much money was spent for nothing. It was indeed similar to gambling. Kinsey turned around and asked Justin, Justin, are you going to pick up the scraps? The stones left over from the cutting were all not big. The biggest one was only the size of a basketball. This was almost meaningless. The staff would probably sweep it into the trash bin very soon. If one were to pick up scraps now, one would have to be extremely lucky to be able to pick up something truly good. Therefore, no one else offered to buy. Justin hesitated for a while and used WeChat to send a message to Kinsey, I want a piece. Kinsey nodded. Are you still selling the small stones? When the fat man heard that, his smile was uglier than a crying face. I'll sell. At least I can cover back my losses a little. How much are you offering? Chapter 773. The surrounding people saw that Kinsey was just a kid. Was she even 20? They couldn't help but say, young people like you are here to play. Are you rich? You should be able to afford such a small amount of money. Just treat it as a lesson for you young people. That's true. How can there be such a young person in this industry? I think young people should go out and find a proper job. Don't put your mind on this. Kinsey smiled and said, there's no need for everyone to worry. This money is not part of my living expenses. Even if I lose, I won't starve to death. 5,000 yuan, I'll buy one. As the remaining pieces were not big, 5,000 yuan was a reasonable price. The fat man said, 8,000. Leave me some money to buy wine. He had lost so much today. He had to find a place to have a good drink. Fine, 8,000 it is then. Kinsey was too lazy to bargain with him. Anyway, she and Angela had each offered 100,000. 8,000 was just a small number. Kinsey gave the money and let Justin choose. There were not many stones to choose from. Everyone thought that he would choose the basketball-sized stone. After all, the bigger the stone, the higher the chances of getting jade. However, Justin only chose a medium-sized piece. Kinsey and Angela had no objections as they were the ones who told him to choose before this, so naturally, he could choose anything he wanted. After Justin made his choice, the people around him shook their heads. Young man, don't you know that you have to choose the biggest one? In my opinion, that stone of yours is most likely a piece of trash. But it's nothing for young people. You can stop after playing for a while. Do you want to use the cutting machine? Do you want any help? Seeing him pick up the stone, Boss Foster asked enthusiastically. Justin shook his head, sat down, and took out a dagger. Everyone could not help but laugh. It's indeed not easy to use a cutting machine for such a small stone, because if there really is something good, it'll be easily cut into pieces. But this is the first time I've seen someone use a dagger. 
Young man, you don't know that sandpaper can be used on stones, right? You can just choose to use sandpaper. How are you going to do anything with a dagger? Justin did not speak and only stared at the small stone. Kinsey and Angela saw that everyone was laughing at them, so they went up and sat with Justin. Kinsey looked up and smiled. Everyone, we bought something that costs 8,000 yuan for fun. Whatever we have is what we have. Is there a rule that we can't use daggers? Her tone wasn't harsh, but it was a little unapproachable. Everyone shrugged and said, you can do whatever you want. You can't get anything good out of it anyway. Exactly. One look and I know you know nothing. You can do whatever you want. After a while, the onlookers lost interest and dispersed. Kinsey looked curiously at Justin, not knowing what he was going to do. Justin used a dagger to cut off a small piece of raw stone. She didn't expect his dagger to be so sharp that it could even cut open such a hard stone. Impressive. Kinsey picked up the small piece that was cut. Looking at the neat edges, she sighed. One had to know that the cutting machine was electric. When using it, the stones would easily shatter. Justin's dagger was able to cut the stone into such a state. It was truly amazing. After cutting it, Justin used the dagger to gently rub against the surface of the raw stone, slowly grinding away the layer on top. Chapter 774 Kinsey and Angela were bored and stood up to look at the other stones. Kinsey, do you have anything you want to buy? Angela asked. Me. Kinsey actually didn't have anything she wanted to buy. She didn't have Nick's taste, so she just wanted to take a look. However, she soon noticed a very large stone. The lines of the stone were cold and stern. It seemed to resemble Ethan. It was strange that a stone looked like Ethan, but the feeling was hard to ignore. It wouldn't be a bad idea to buy it for Ethan. Angela saw her looking at the stone and ran up to take a look. Then, she clicked her tongue and said, Kinsey, this costs 5 million. It's indeed very expensive, but it's more than twice the size of the stone that the person just opened. Forget it, forget it. I can't buy a stone for 5 million. Kinsey dismissed this thought. Ethan's total net worth was less than 10 million yuan, and he only got the money because his house was demolished. She would be crazy to spend 5 million yuan to buy a stone. Although she really wanted to earn more money to support him, she shouldn't use such a method. Angela saw that Kinsey had said that she didn't want to buy it, but her eyes were fixed on that stone. She thought about it and made up her mind. She gritted her teeth and said, Kinsey, if you like that stone, I'll buy it for you. She couldn't take seeing Kinsey wanting it so badly but not being able to get it. What? You're giving it to me. Kinsey remembered that when she wanted to fork out a million dollars to buy a stone here, a look of pain was etched across her face. Kinsey thought that she didn't have much money and was just a child from an ordinary wealthy family. Who knew that Angela would buy something worth five million dollars for her? Yeah, if you like it, I can give it to you. Angela usually didn't like to spend money extravagantly. She was different from those rich young ladies. She didn't like to buy bags or play around. She just liked to read books and study. But it seemed like she could bear to spend money on Kinsey. It was worth it. Kinsey quickly refused. No need. It's just a stone. It's not worth it. Besides, if I really like it, I'll buy it myself. Angela felt a little regretful that she had been tactfully rejected. Since when did she feel so uncomfortable for getting rejected? She was about to insist when she heard Boss Foster shout, My goodness. Kinsey and Angela quickly walked toward Justin. Then, they heard Boss Foster shout exaggeratedly, That's awesome. Young man, you're really amazing. Only then did they see that in the raw stone Justin had used his dagger to gently rub, a hint of jade green had already slowly appeared. It was sparkling and translucent. The color made one feel relaxed and happy. In other words, Justin found jade in this broken piece of stone. And it was top quality goods. Boss Foster shouted excitedly, this is a top quality breed. This color, this quality, tisk tisk. The bystanders who had already dispersed gradually gathered around again after hearing what Boss Foster said. This guy really got something. Young people are indeed lucky. Newborn calves are not afraid of tigers. Young people have more courage and luck than old people like us. 
Justin only lowered his head and continued to rub gently without saying a word. Chapter 775. The area he had cut open was already the size of a bowl. It could be seen that the amount of jade that was inside the stone was not small. Someone immediately said, young man, stop grinding. Sell this stone to me and I'll give you 500,000. Everyone immediately clicked their tongues and said, young man, 500,000. That's dozens more than the money you spent to buy it. Sell it. That's right, that's right. There's such a big piece of jade exposed now, but if you continue to grind away the layers, there might not be any left. Maybe there's only so much. It's better to sell it. Justin, who was unmoved, looked up at Kinsey, obviously asking for her opinion. If he sold it now, he would earn 500,000 yuan. He could use 500,000 yuan to buy some jade scraps to repair Angela's bracelet. If he continued to grind, perhaps this stone only had a little jade on the surface. The more he ground, the less valuable it would be. This was one of the characteristics of stone gambling. If one did not open the stone completely, no one would be able to tell what was inside. When the fat man heard that Justin had found some jade, he returned and picked up the remaining scraps. Immediately, there were people who bought the scraps for tens of thousands of yuan per piece. The fat man also sat down carefully and rubbed sandpaper on the pieces. In just a short period, the scene became lively as everyone rushed over to see the treasure. Such a scene could easily make one lose their mind and lose their judgment. Young man, sell it for 500,000. I'll get a professional to continue opening it. There were even people egging Justin on. Justin looked straight at Kinsey, as if he could agree or reject with just one look or order from her. Kinsey could also tell that Justin had been revitalized after coming here and being around these stones. It was not because he liked to gamble but because he belonged here. The things he had learned from his master included cutting and repairing various jades. Most likely, all of these were the things that he desired to do the most. Therefore, Kinsey raised her eyebrows and smiled. Continue to open it. Anyway, it's a stone we bought for 8,000 yuan. The worst case scenario is that it won't be worth anything, but it's just 8,000 yuan. Justin, continue. The bidder was disappointed and said, children, you guys lost a chance to make a fortune. A thousand bars of gold won't make me happy. Kinsey did not mind. To her, the cost was only 8,000 yuan. It would not be a pity to lose that amount of money. Unexpectedly, as Justin continued, the surface area of the green jade became bigger and bigger. It did not break like the others had expected. It was obvious that this jade was bigger and better than they had expected. Immediately, someone said, 1 million, I'll offer 1 million. 11 million. Young man, think about it. 15 million. Young man, it's not too late to sell it to me now. Boss Foster rubbed his hands in excitement. He had never expected that such a small stone would be so valuable. This was good news for his stall. Hurry up. Go serve tea and bring the chairs over, Boss Foster instructed. Chapter 776. This was the rule, and it was also what every stall should do. They treated the customers who found treasures as treasures. In a while, they would have to set off firecrackers to celebrate and announce it to the public. With that, their stall would be bustling. After the fat man and the others searched through all the broken stones, they didn't find any treasures. They only got a small piece of jade. It was only worth a few tens of thousands of yuan. Everyone was filled with anticipation and worry about the jade that Justin was handling. It was obvious that the chances of Justin being able to produce a complete jade were not high. However, there were still big shots around them who wanted to buy it. Young man, I'll give you three million yuan. The three of you can live carefree lives. Why must you stubbornly persist? The reason why they insisted on buying it was that if this piece of jade was fully extracted, it would be worth more than the prices they named. Justin was tired and looked at Kinsey. At this time, someone had already raised the price to 5 million. This price was already sky high compared to the 8,000 that Kinsey and the rest had paid. Seeing that he was tired, Kinsey said, how about we call it a day? Justin nodded. Kinsey squatted down and asked, Justin, Angela, let me ask you guys. 
Are you planning to sell this and split the money, or keep it? Or do you want to use it for other purposes? Angela quickly said, I don't care. I don't understand this game. Kinsey, you can do whatever you want. Justin also took out his phone. Kinsey, I'll listen to you. They were all very sincere and were waiting for Kinsey to make a decision. It was impossible for Kinsey to completely take it for herself. She said, I want to take this to exchange for that stone. Do you see that? It was the stone that Kinsey had been looking at with all her heart. That stone was very good and she wanted to have it, but it was a little expensive. She could not bear to spend five million on it. However, if she were to use this jade to exchange for it, it would be equivalent to spending 8,000 yuan for it. Angela nodded without thinking. Sure, of course. Even if Kinsey hadn't mentioned it, she wanted to buy the stone and give it to Kinsey. Justin immediately agreed. No problem at all. He owed his life to Kinsey. What could he not do for her? Kinsey stood up and said to Boss Foster, Boss Foster, can I exchange this piece of jade for your big stone? Of course. Boss Foster was overjoyed. The price of that big stone was only 5 million, and the stone that Kinsey had partially opened was something someone had offered 5 million for. It was completely profitable for him to carry out this exchange. It was equivalent to a living advertisement for the shop. Kinsey smiled and a light flashed in her eyes. Can you give me some smaller stones too? Which ones do you want? Boss Foster was very smart and didn't agree to it easily. Those broken stones that aren't worth anything, can you give me some? Kinsey had seen Justin's expression just now and felt like it was as if he was possessed. She knew that he liked to open stones. She was prepared to keep this big one, but she would take some smaller ones for Justin to play with. Perhaps his speech disorder would gradually recover. Chapter 777. Boss Foster pretended to be troubled. But I don't think that's a good idea. I have to keep these small ones to sell for money. Then forget it. I'll go somewhere else to trade it. Kinsey did not waste any time talking to him. With a smile on her face, she was about to leave. The onlookers also left with them. Someone couldn't help but speak up. Young man, you should treasure the wealth you've obtained. That large rock might not even be able to produce such a good treasure. Are you really going to trade? If you want to trade, you might as well sell it to me. I'll give you 5 million yuan in cash. I can give you another 500,000 yuan. If you exchange it, you might only have a pile of broken stones. Young and impetuous children should not be foolish and miss the first bucket of gold in their lives. After hearing their persuasion, Boss Foster couldn't take it anymore. He immediately said, fine, fine, fine. I'll trade with you. Just tell me what you want. Seeing that Kinsey and the rest had really chosen to trade their stone, everyone could not help but sigh. They felt that this young man was too foolish and did not know how to cherish his gains. Who knew if there would be any more valuable stones in the future? Justin, pick some stones that you like. Kinsey picked the big stone and let Justin choose the small ones. Justin looked left and right, choosing dozens of small stones. Kinsey wrote down an address and asked Boss Foster to send them all to Justin's place. These things could not be sent to Kinsey's place anyway. I want to open another one. Justin sent Kinsey a WeChat message. Of course, you can. You can open whichever piece you like. Except for the big one, it's all yours, Kinsey said. Therefore, Boss Foster left a piece for Justin to play with. The rest were sent to the address Kinsey gave him. As Justin was dealing with the stone, Kinsey and Angela went around to play. At the same time, Kinsey also went to get two cards. Each had 1.7 million yuan in them for Angela and Justin. After all, that piece of jade was worth 5 million yuan. She took it to trade it for a stone. Angela and Justin should have a share too, so the money that should be given to them must not be any less than that. After she got the cards, she bought some food with Angela. She saw that Justin was still using his dagger on that stone. After a while, it could be seen that there was no hint of any green. No one was interested in watching it anymore. Who would be so lucky as to open two stones with valuable jade inside? It's something one should not even dream of. That's right. 
Young people nowadays are not only dissatisfied with what they have, but they also indulge in fantasy. Let's go and take a look over there. Kinsey did not expect any results from Justin this time. She handed him the iced coke she bought and said, take a break. Justin took the coke and drank two mouthfuls. Kinsey took out her card and said, one for each of you. What is this? Angela asked curiously. Money. We agreed on the jade just now, everyone has a share. I can't keep everything alone. Take it Angela immediately backed away and retracted her hand. Her eyes were moist. Kinsey, don't you think of me as a friend? I sincerely treat you as a friend. When she said that, Kinsey did not know what to say. Why did she feel like she was a scumbag? Chapter 778 Looking at Angela's reddened eyes, Kinsey could not bear it. She gave it to Justin. Justin, take it. Justin retracted his hand as if he had been electrocuted and shook his head with all his might. His expression was like that of a child who was about to be abandoned by Kinsey. It was as if after receiving the card, his connection and feelings with Kinsey would be cut off. That expression made one's heart ache. What's wrong with all of you? Kinsey helplessly said. Didn't we agree that if nothing turned out, we'd shoulder the responsibility together? If we succeed, we'll split it evenly. I don't want to. I just want to be friends with you, Angela replied. We're friends. This is different. Angela insisted. Justin agreed and kept nodding, refusing to accept the card. Seeing that Kinsey still wanted to give it to him, he simply lowered his head and used his dagger to grind the stone hard like a child in a fit of pique. Kinsey could only take back the cards. Okay, okay. Talking about money hurts relationships. I'll keep them for now. Missed, missed. The onlookers pointed at Justin Stone and said. Kinsey and Angela fixed their eyes on the spot where Justin's dagger and the raw stone had touched. There was already a thin layer of white. It looked like fog. Angela asked in surprise, what's mist? Kinsey explained, it's easy to see jade when there's a layer of mist on the raw stone. However, that's not necessarily the case. Usually, there's mist in places with jade, but there might not be jade in places with mist. Seeing mist only means that the probability is high. Angela really didn't expect Justin's luck to be so good. The number of onlookers increased again. Gradually, the mist under Justin's dagger gradually revealed a green color. This young man's luck is really too good. This really isn't simple. I can't believe a stone like that has jade inside it. Boss Foster, the things in your stall are amazing. Boss Foster was especially excited. Sometimes, a stone from a stall might not be able to produce any treasure even after a few years of operation. After all, the boss himself couldn't tell if the stone was good or bad. It was like coming to a lottery shop. The boss could not decide who would win the prize. However, if someone really got lucky in a shop, then the business of the shop would probably soar in the future. This was especially the case for raw stones. No matter what methods were used, if they didn't open it, they wouldn't be able to find out what was inside. Hence, if Justin really successfully found jade in two pieces, then even all the items in his stall would probably not meet the demand. In an instant, many people gathered around again. Justin slowly rubbed against it, and soon, that piece of green grew bigger and bigger. Looking at its color, it was probably even better than the previous piece. Young man, four million. Sell it to me. Some people were already pleading with Kinsey and Angela. Jade was very popular in the market, but not many stores could afford it. On the other hand, Justin was able to get two pieces in a row. The reason why this big shot offered to buy it was firstly to ensure the supply of goods, and secondly, he wanted to get a good start. I'll buy it for 5 million yuan. Young man, you really can't miss this opportunity. There might not be such a good opportunity in the future. Chapter 779. Justin was unmoved. Kinsey was also very happy and said, you guys can decide for yourselves now. I already made the decision last time. Whether they sold it or not and how they sold it all depended on Justin and Angela. Angela had no objections. She shook her head. I don't understand anything about this. Justin, you can make the decision. Justin took out his phone and wrote, not selling.
Kinsey took a look and immediately said, I'm sorry everyone, but we're planning to keep this piece of jade for ourselves. We're not selling it. I'm really sorry. Angela was frugal with spending money, but her family was not short of money. She followed Kinsey and said, we want to keep it for ourselves to play with. We won't sell it. Justin could keep it if he wanted to. Everyone was especially disappointed. They tried their best to persuade him, but Justin did not agree. They had no choice but to forget it and disperse. Justin was also tired. He picked up the big stone. Boss Foster quickly got someone to find a sturdy bag for him to put it in. He passed him cigarettes before sending the three guests away. His stall welcomed a wave of peak business. Many experts stopped by the stall to watch and appreciate the stones displayed, waiting to purchase them. Justin hugged the stone and followed Kinsey and Angela with a relaxed expression. As they walked, Kinsey whispered, there are people following us. Everyone, be careful and follow me. Just now, she noticed that there were people sneakily following them while in the crowd. It seemed that those people had taken a fancy to the piece of jade in Justin's hand and wanted to take the risk by using improper methods to snatch it from them. But was it really that easy to snatch? Angela immediately became nervous and said, why don't I get someone to help? Otherwise, if we encounter bad people. She had bodyguards, but she didn't bring any today. She didn't know if it was too late to call them over. No need. Just follow me, Kinsey said. She brought Angela and Justin to a small hotel nearby. Those sneaky people immediately followed but lost their targets. Hurry up and find them. Their target was the jade, so they had to find them. The few of them spread out in all directions, going toward the hall and the rooms upstairs. Their sharp gazes scanned through every place and person. After a while, two young and beautiful girls walked out in high heels. Their long hair fluttered in the wind, and their figures were graceful. They had charming smiles on their faces as they chatted and laughed with each other. Soon, they walked past these people. The few men could no longer be bothered to look for their targets. They followed the women out as if their souls had been snatched until someone shouted, hurry up and look for them. Only then did they retract their gazes and begin to reluctantly look for their targets. After a while, a pregnant woman with a big belly walked out. She held her protruding belly with both hands and slowly walked past these people toward the parking lot. Point one. After that, the pregnant lady got into the car of the two ladies. The people who were in the hotel continued to search like headless flies, but where could they find their targets? The three young men had seemingly disappeared into thin air. In the car, Kinsey and Angela couldn't help but laugh when they saw Justin's maternity wear. They didn't expect Justin to look quite gentle when he was disguised as a woman. Chapter 780 Justin felt a little uncomfortable with their smiles. His face was a little red as he reached out to take off his wig and took out the jade from his stomach. Kinsey and Angela saw that he was shy, so they stopped laughing and continued driving steadily. By the time those people reacted, the three young men would have already turned into three young women and left the city. It would be too late to chase after them. Furthermore, if these people wanted to take advantage of the situation, they could only do something in the vicinity of the trading center. They could not make a move elsewhere. Very soon, Kinsey's rented car was parked in the parking lot downstairs. Kinsey and Angela had no opinion on how to split the remaining items. After all, they had only spent 8,000 yuan. However, Justin stopped them and quickly typed on his phone, when I earn money in the future, I'll only take my share. Okay, Kinsey replied. After all, her main battleground for earning money was the entertainment industry. She wanted to earn enough money to support Ethan. Angela wasn't calculative. I'll do whatever Kinsey wants. Just ask her if you have any opinions in the future. Then I'll keep the 192,000 that I haven't spent yet, Justin wrote. It was the remaining money that Kinsey and Angela had pooled together. Of course, there was no problem, so the matter was quickly settled. Angela had fun with Kinsey for the whole day and was especially happy. When she returned home, her face was filled with excitement. When she saw her father, Jeff, and mother, Selena, sitting on the sofa, she quickly stopped and greeted them. Why is this child so happy today? Selena asked. 
Angela originally wanted to talk about Kinsey, but on second thought, the Woods family was taboo in the entire Lewis family. Kinsey was also a member of the Woods family. If she said it out loud, who knew how big of a commotion it would cause? She couldn't help but shut her mouth. The joyful expression on his face quickly disappeared and returned to normal. Go upstairs and change, then come down for some chicken soup, said Selena with a smile. Angela was usually very quiet at home, so Selena did not take her change of mood to heart. However, when Angela went upstairs, her footsteps became heavy. The person she most wanted to be friends with was actually a member of the Woods family. This meant that she had to be sneaky in the future. Thinking of this, she felt a little uncomfortable. A few days later, Justin asked Kinsey to go to the house she rented for him. As soon as Kinsey stepped in, she saw the raw stones that she had exchanged for the last time. The room was filled up like a small raw stone shop. However, perhaps Justin was a clean freak, so he had tidied up the place neatly and cleanly. There wasn't even a trace of dust. Why are you so secretive to show me something? What are you looking at? Kinsey walked around and saw that the big stone she had her eyes on was still there. She couldn't help but touch it. Justin carried a tray covered with a cloth. It was very exquisite and looked like something he cherished very much. What is this? Justin gestured for her to open it. Kinsey reached out and paused. It can't be a bug, right? When I was young, I was most afraid of people playing pranks and using bugs to scare me. Even now, I still have psychological trauma. Justin shook his head, an amused expression appearing on his face. He didn't expect her to be afraid of bugs. Chapter 781. Kinsey closed her eyes. She made up her mind and lifted the cloth. Something in front of her made her heart stop. It was because it was too exquisite. The aqua green jade was made into jewelry of different styles. The exquisite handiwork and design made it a visual feast. It gave people the feeling that it was a dazzling lineup of jewelry, too much for the eyes to take in. Kinsey thought of something and asked, did you make all these out of the jade you brought back from that day? Justin's eyes were bright, and he nodded a little embarrassedly. Justin, you're really a genius. Kinsey praised from the bottom of her heart. I was with a friend before and saw him buy raw stones, but he was just playing around and didn't know how to make them into jewelry. Your craftsmanship is really superb. Justin put down the things and typed a message. Those people wanted to spend a few million to buy this piece of jade, but if I sell it to them, it'll be wasted in their hands. By extracting the jade myself to make jewelry, I can save on costs and also make more out of it. Kinsey read it and said, yes, the better the craftsmanship and the more experienced one is, the better they can make use of the jade. It's rare that it's a complete piece of jade. Not everybody can be as lucky. To make the most out of it, one must have outstanding skills. Justin's eyes lit up as he nodded. His face brightened up as he typed out another message. These are all for you. Kinsey picked up a few random jewelry pieces. Some were earrings, while others could be embedded into rings. They were all incomparably exquisite. However, for things like jade, the color mattered a lot. These were more suitable for women of age and experience. Young women were not suitable to wear these. Moreover, it was impossible for Kinsey to wear so much jewelry at once. How about this? If you don't ming, sell these. How about it? It's useless to keep so many. Kinsey asked for his opinion. Justin thought for a while and continued to send WeChat messages. Okay, but this requires you to open a studio or a company. Otherwise, it'll be considered a talentless operation. Okay, I'll settle this matter. Kinsey saw that he had found something he liked to do, and his complexion was much better than before. His body had also recovered quite well, and he was willing to participate in this. Justin was very interested in this, but his interest was entirely on the jade stone. He was immediately immersed in it and sat down. He picked up his professional tools and started to work on his stones. When Kinsey was about to leave, he took out Angela's bracelet and asked Kinsey to bring it to Angela. Kinsey looked carefully and found that the bracelet, which was broken in one place previously, had been completely repaired. The repair work was done exceedingly well. It was so green that it blended perfectly with the original jade. It was sparkling and translucent. 
Unexpectedly, even after Justin patched it up, there were no traces left behind at all. It looked as if it had just been made. Justin's craftsmanship and ability were evident. After returning home, Kinsey sent Eva a WeChat message. I haven't seen the baby yet. Is it convenient for me to visit him tonight? Of course, it's convenient. Visit me anytime. Eva quickly sent a smiley face. Then I'll come over tonight. Coincidentally, Kinsey had gotten a small jade pendant from Justin. It was the perfect gift for a little kid. Chapter 782 Eva was very happy that Kinsey was coming over. She handed the child to the nanny and specially dressed herself up before waiting for Kinsey to come. Just as she was thinking about it, the doorbell rang. The nanny was about to answer the door when Eva quickly said, I'll open it myself. She excitedly opened the door and found that it was not Kinsey standing in front of her but a woman in her sixties. Eva was stunned for a moment before remembering that she had seen her photo on Jared's phone. She was Jared's mother. Hello, aunt. Please come in. This was the first time Eva was meeting her mother-in-law. Her attitude was polite, but her heart skipped a beat. She knew in her heart that with her status, it was impossible for her to get the approval of the Mo family's parents. Jared was trying his best to mediate, but it wasn't going very well. Sure enough, Mrs. Mo's attitude was very cold. She walked in and said, why did you move into my son's house? Eva had always been renting a place, and it was inconvenient for her to continue renting after giving birth. Furthermore, her relationship with Jared had stabilized, so she agreed with Jared's arrangement. However, Mrs. Mo asked her that as if Eva was taking advantage of Jared. Eva gave the nanny a look and told her to carry the child to the room. Then, she brought a cup of tea over and smiled. I'm sorry, aunt. I didn't pick you up when you came. You must inform me the next time you come. Jared and I will pick you up at the airport. She and Jared were not married, but their relationship was stable. Hence, even though her attitude was respectful, she expressed her stance. Hearing this, Mrs. Mo flew into a rage. What do you mean by you and Jared? Have I agreed to your relationship? You know very well what kind of person you are. Let's not bring up the fact that you were a mistress in the past. This child isn't even Jared's. How can I agree to you two being together? Anyway, you have to move out today. Armo family will never allow a woman like you, who was pregnant before marriage and gave birth to a bastard, to join us. These words were extremely harsh. Eva's sore spot was exposed and her expression turned extremely ugly. After she had a child, she had no intention of getting into another relationship or even think about marriage. However, Jared had moved her with his sincerity, so Eva agreed to try and date him. However, none of this could stop her mother-in-law from telling the truth. These were things Eva least wanted to hear. Aunt, I think our relationship is our own business. What's your own business? Marrying and having children, which one of these shouldn't be our family's business? Jared was raised by me, so I have the right to make decisions for his matters. Anyway, I definitely won't let him get together with a woman like you, Mrs. Mo said loudly and firmly. Eva wanted to continue but Mrs. Mo said, I've already given you my ultimatum. If you know what's good for you, move out. Otherwise, I'll find a moving company and move everything out tomorrow. Eva was furious, but she had no choice when it came to Jared's mother. She was about to speak when there was a light knock on the door. Eva opened the door with red eyes and saw Kinsey. Kinsey saw her crying and asked, what happened? Nothing. Eva quickly concealed her emotions. Chapter 783. However, Kinsey had already seen the angry Mrs. Mo sitting on the sofa. Kinsey guessed that this person was Jared's mother. The last time Eva had given birth, Mrs. Mo called Jared away because of her heart disease. Now that she had come personally, it seemed like she had ill intentions. Sorry, I didn't know you had visitors, Kinsey said quietly. Mrs. Mo stood up, glanced at Kinsey, and left without saying anything. Did brother Jared's mother cause trouble for you? She doesn't agree with the relationship. Eva nodded. I knew it would be difficult but I only realize the severity now that I'm actually facing it. Back then, when she gave birth alone, Eva knew that Jared's mother was the one behind it. 
But now, when she came knocking on her door, the embarrassment was even more painful. I just know that I no longer have the right to love and be loved, Eva lowered her head, her eyes reddening. She was no longer as capable as she was at work. In front of Kinsey, she openly revealed her vulnerability. How is that possible? Everyone has the right to love and be loved. You didn't do anything wrong. Furthermore, choosing to be with you was Brother Jared's own decision. Who said that a woman can't start over and lead a happy life? Kinsey saw Eva crying and felt bad. Eva didn't want her to worry about her and said, you haven't seen the child yet. Go take a look. She got the nanny to carry the child out. The obedient child was no longer as wrinkled as before and had become fair and chubby. Kinsey recalled how Joshua looked back then and her heart warmed. She hugged him. So cute. Yes, the child is very sensible and obedient. He rarely cries. He always just eats and sleeps. A blissful smile appeared on Eva's face. This is a gift for you. Kinsey placed the item beside the baby. She recalled that Joshua was also like this back then. He was exceptionally sensible and obedient since he was born and rarely needed Kinsey to worry about him. It was as if he had unknowingly grown into his current self. After Kinsey left Eva's house, she thought of her child and felt warm inside. But thinking about Eva's situation, she sighed. Perhaps she should help them. For the next two days, she was busy filming, but she still thought about Eva's matters. When Jared came over to deliver the documents to her, it was obvious that there were dark circles under his gold-rimmed glasses. It seemed that he was also deeply troubled by this matter. According to Eva, he was very determined to protect her. However, he could not stand his mother-in-law's constant crying and tantrums. As her son, he was also a little tired of dealing with her. Kinsey took the documents and asked, Are Sister Eva and the baby okay? They're doing all right. It's just that during this period, I've neglected to manage your matters. I'm really sorry. It's fine. Anyway, I'm doing quite well on the production team. Luna is also very supportive. Also, you know that I have someone else helping me. Jared understood that the man behind her was much more capable than him. Was he really just a chauffeur? Oh, that's right. Brother Jared, can you compile a list of information on your mother's personality, hobbies, and family matters for me? Kinsey saw his expression change and quickly said, I won't mess around. I just need to think of a way to help you and Sister Eva. Chapter 784. Jared thought about it. No matter what, he could not hurt his mother. Eva was not in a position to fight with his mother. He had already tried everything, but he could not stop his mother from coming. His father had been making phone calls every day from his hometown. He could no longer stop the two of them. Eva had not even completed her postnatal recovery period. She had not been able to rest well. Perhaps Kinsey's idea could really solve the problem from the source. After a day, Kinsey received the documents that Jared had specially sent over. If there's anything you need to ask me, just give me a call. Although Jared didn't really believe that Kinsey could solve the problem, he still held great hope. He had even threatened to sever ties with his mother, but she refused to budge and insisted that Eva move out of his place. Kinsey was Jared's last hope. Okay, I will. After Kinsey finished filming, she held Eva's mother-in-law's information and read it. Oh, Ben dragged out his last word and sat down beside her. No wonder you always pass in one go. So you're giving special treatment behind my back. Kinsey, Kinsey, you've learned your lesson. Kinsey handed him a bottle of coke and continued looking down. What exactly are you looking at? Why are you so engrossed? Ben reached out and dragged her over. He wanted to see what she was looking at too. He looked at it for a while and realized that it had nothing to do with acting. What was the point of looking at the life of an old woman in her 60s? Kinsey, what exactly are you doing? Shish, this is a secret. Kinsey had learned about Mrs. Moe's strengths and weaknesses. Although she was hesitant, it seemed she would have to make use of this information now. Ben, do me a favor. Kinsey pulled him over and ordered. When Ben heard that, he thought that there would be something fun for him to get involved in and he immediately agreed. Kinsey called Angela again and asked, didn't you say that you work in the hospital? Can you do me a favor? TM just an intern. 
Which department specialist do you want to see? I'm not very good at this yet, so I can introduce you to my teacher, Angela said with some shame and frustration. Although Kinsey came to seek her help, she couldn't help her. All these years of medical school had been wasted. There's no need for so much trouble. You're enough, Kinsey said. Angela was immediately filled with confidence and hope. Then tell me what to do. Eva's mother-in-law was renting a small house and ready to fight a long battle with her son. Anyway, she would never allow a woman like Eva to bring her child to their family. In the momming, she was walking past a park to buy groceries at the market across the estate. For the past few days, she always saw an old man with a sage-like aura sitting there. His eyes were narrowed as he mumbled something. A young man was kneeling on the ground. He bowed with cupped hands and thanked, Thank you, great immortal, for helping me resolve the bloody calamity. Great immortal, you're truly a deity in this world. In the future, I'll worship you day and night. I'll definitely kneel and worship you to show my sincerity. Mrs. Mo was tempted. Wasn't there a disaster in her family? She had always believed in the words of divine beings and gods. In her hometown, she would frequently go to the temple for a few days to eat vegetarian meals and recite Buddhist prayers. Without waiting for the young man to leave, Mrs. Mo impatiently stepped forward and said, Great Immortal, please give me a reading as well. Chapter 785. The young man was none other than Ben. However, he had put on a little bit of makeup, so no one could tell that he was handsome at all. When he saw Mrs. Mo coming over, he immediately said, Aunt, Great Immortal is really smart. Before this, my dad was sick and couldn't recover. It was great. Immortal who guided me to transfer my dad to a different hospital. It's the same illness and the same medicine. But my dad, who used to sit in a wheelchair, can now walk on his own. Really. That's great. Mrs. Mo believed in such things. The more mysterious it was, the more she believed in it. This was Kinsey's conclusion from the information Jared had given her. But great immortal is just someone with good fate. It doesn't matter how much money is offered. Mrs. Mo said anxiously, great immortal, you have to help me. I'll kneel down and kowtow to you. You have to help me no matter what. Since you and I aren't fated, I wouldn't give you a reading. Kinsey, who was disguised as great immortal, said. Her words were deep and unfathomable. Once she spoke, she carried the aura of an immortal. But when you were 20 years old, you saved a cat. That cat had a spirit, and you did a great job, so. TM willing to make an exception and give you a reading this one time. Save a cat. Mrs. Mo had already forgotten about it. Now that great immortal mentioned it, she remembered that it was true. Jared had heard about it once before. Since Kinsey wanted to dig deep into his family matters, he gave her this clue. Mrs. Mo immediately felt that the great immortal was capable of knowing this piece of information. She immediately said, yes, yes. Great immortal, please help me. I can help you, but from the looks of it, your glabella is dark, your white hair has increased, and your cheeks are turning yellow. Your son must be facing a disaster. Your son is in trouble. Has he been in poor health since he was young? Did he undergo surgery when he was 17? He often fainted when he was 20 years old and gradually recovered after turning 21. Now, he was over 30 years old. Although he had recovered and had a successful career, his marriage did not go well. The condition of this son of yours isn't too good. Quote. Mrs. Mo nodded immediately. Eva and her son had the intention of marrying into the Yu family. Wasn't this Jared's misfortune? This was also the Mo family's misfortune. Great Immortal was really amazing. He could tell at a glance even though she did not say anything. Furthermore, she even described all of the previous incidents accurately. Kinsey said, has your son been suffering from headaches recently? Dizziness, dark eye circles, and fatigue. Yes, yes, yes. That's how it is. He's troubled and restless. Kinsey understood in her heart that this was not truly the case. With a mother like her meddling and causing unrest in the household, how could Jared not be in such a situation? Kinsey said, he might have a disease that's difficult to resolve. In this world, only by finding the person who matches his birth characters can his calamity be resolved. A compatible person. 
Please give me some pointers, great immortal. Mrs. Mo was so scared that she wanted to kneel down. The secrets of the heavens must not be revealed. Kinsey said, put away her things, and left. Mrs. Mo was shocked out of her wits and immediately called Jared. Son, where are you? At the hospital. Ah, what's wrong? Are you really sick? Mrs. Mo felt as if a knife was being twisted in her heart. Wasn't it all because of Eva? No, it's just a health checkup, Jared replied casually. Chapter 786 Mrs. Mo immediately expressed that she wanted to go over and rushed straight to the hospital. In the end, she heard a young doctor say to Jared, this can either be a big or small matter. We still need to do further tests to confirm. Mrs. Mo's legs went weak. Doctor, what happened to my son? This doctor was Angela. She said solemnly, there's a cyst in his body. I don't know if it's benign or malignant. What does benign mean? What does malignant mean? If it's benign, it's fine as long as it's removed. If it's malignant, it's cancer, Angela said. Then what should we do? What should we do? Angela couldn't answer this question. She shook her head and left. Mrs. Mo wanted to blame everything on Eva, but seeing her son like this, she could not say anything. This was her only son, and she had pinned all her hopes on him. Now that her son was like this, what else could she say? Jared said, Mom, I'll send you back. Or you can stay at my place. Where are you staying? I'm not staying there. Mrs. Mo did not want to stay with Eva. Eva has already moved out. Jared sounded very sad. She really moved out. That's great. No, I mean, I'll move in to take care of you, Mrs. Mo said quickly. This was a great news, but when she thought of her son's illness, she became worried again. Jared was behind her, adjusting his glasses. In order to cooperate with Kinsey's plan, Eva had already moved out. Angela also helped with the hospital reports. Now all depends whether Mrs. Mo believed it or not. Based on his experience with his mother, she would believe it. After all, once one started to believe in superstitions, it would be as difficult to change that belief. It was as though it had already been ingrained in one's mind. Although the mother in, La moved into the house bought by her son, she was still worried. That night, she went to that place again to look for the great immortal. But she couldn't find him no matter how hard she looked. The examination report from the hospital has been unclear, so Jared was asked to continue the examination. Mrs. Mo kept wandering around the park every day to find the great immortal. And finally one day she saw him. As soon as she saw him, she rushed over and said, Immortal, please help me. Kinsey sat down and said, It's not easy for me to help you with this matter. I'm afraid it won't be easy for your son to find someone whose birth characters match with his. Do you mean that we must find that person and let them get married? This person's horoscopes needs to be compatible with your son. So, he can feel relax and earn benefit from each other. If not, his fortune and mental state will be very bad, which is inevitable. This is why some people are becoming more and more prosperous, while others are becoming less and less prosperous. Kinsey kept on making stories. Mrs. Mo believed in these things without a doubt. However, where could she find such a compatible person? She respectfully said, please give me a hint, great immortal. What characters? Mrs. Mo hurriedly reported it. Kinsey pinched her fingers and said, your son is destined to be rich, successful in his career, and led a noble life. However, there's one thing. He has a steady personality but is slightly depressed. He's physically strong but is easily prone to illnesses. He needs someone to keep him company. The person who's destined to keep him company will have a child with her. I'm afraid it'll be difficult for your son to succeed. Chapter 787 Mrs. Mo understood a little. Could this person be Eva? She did some calculations in her heart. Jared had indeed been prone to falling sick and was weak from a young age. Although he had always been doing well in his studies and had a successful career, his body had always been a huge worry for her. After Kinsey finished speaking, she stood up and was about to leave. When it came to things like this, she could not rush things too much. Only when the other party started being hasty could she highlight the mysterious nobility of her great immortal persona and make the other party more convinced of the truth of the matter. 
Mrs. Mo hurriedly pulled her back, refusing to let her leave. After that, Aunt Yu was skeptical and quickly called Jared to ask for Eva's birth characters. No matter what, this matter concerned her son, so she had to get to the bottom of it. If marrying Eva would really be beneficial to her son, as a mother, she would have to accept it no matter how difficult it was. Jared was very confused and refused to give the information to her no matter what. His mother had to coax him for a long time before he gave it to her. Great immortal, I beg you, please give me another reading, Mrs. Mo pleaded. Kinsey could only sit down again. Sigh, since I've already helped you, I'll help you until the end. Give it to me. Mrs. Mo respectfully relayed the information she got from Jared. Kinsey counted with her fingers for a long time before saying, cheap characters are quite compatible. This woman's luck is average, but fortunately, she has a tenacious nature and is a person who can bring prosperity to her husband. If she's fated to have a child, it can also help her to have good fortune in her later years. However, her previous fate was bumpy, and now, she's being obstructed in all ways. She might face some trouble getting together with your son. Mrs. Mo fell into deep thought. Could she be the trouble great immortal was talking about? Suddenly, a middle-aged man jumped out from the side and questioned, where did this elderly bastard come from? Is he cheating an elder of her money? Mrs. Mo quickly pulled him back. Great immortal doesn't accept money, nor does he lie. Ha <laughs> ha, this is just a trick. When the time comes, he'll cheat you off your money. Besides, how can you ask such a person about marriage? It doesn't make any sense at all. Old woman, you're really muddle-headed. Why would you believe in lies? The middle-aged man's. Kinsey pointed at him and said, you're so rude. You have a pile of debt to pay, yet you're meddling in other people's business. When the middle-aged man heard this, he immediately kneeled down. Great immortal, you, how did you know that I have Deb? This middle-aged man was also played by Ben in order to deepen Mrs. Mo's trust. As expected, when Mrs. Mo saw this, she prostrated herself before Kinsey and took the initiative to say, there must be a reason behind the things passed down by our ancestors. Kinsey ignored the middle-aged man and said to Mrs. Mo in agreement, you're right. The things passed down by our ancestors make sense. Besides, the way of yin and yang was similar to scientific principles. Think about it, weren't matching birth characters the equivalent of the three harmonious outlooks in the science field? If the three outlooks were compatible, wouldn't a person's mood be good? Once a person's mood was good, their body would be healthy and their career would be smooth, no. Otherwise, would everything go wrong? If one can't even stay at home, how would one have the time to take care of one's body and develop on? If someone else had said this to Mrs. Mo, she would definitely not believe it. Chapter 788. But if Great Immortal said so, she would definitely believe him. And these words sounded so reasonable. Think about it. In the past, was your son forced to study hard because of your high expectations? He didn't even have time to play. It made him depressed. Although he has become a genius now, how many times has his health been sacrificed during this period? Kinsey continued to ask. She had to convince Mrs. Mo at one go. Mrs. Mo slapped her leg. That was right. She had been controlling her son since he was young. That was why he had such a problem. Was it too much for her to continue caring so much? Oh wonder when Jared was together with Eva in the past half a year, everything was smooth sailing for him. When Eva moved away, his body started having problems. This was because he was in a bad mood. After Kinsey finished speaking, she picked up her things and left. The, middle-aged man, was still behind her, begging her to read his fortune. Mrs. Mo felt extremely conflicted. It was impossible for her to accept Eva just like that. But once she thought about her son's health and future, she had no choice but to grit her teeth. She closed her eyes and called Jared. Son, where does Eva live? She wanted to fetch her back personally. Mom, we've already broken up. Are you still going to disturb her? Jared knew that Kinsey might have succeeded. Since this was the case, he would resist for now. I'm going to pick her up. Mrs. Mo said. No matter how difficult it was, she had to try to accept Eva. Her son was more important than anything else. 
Mrs. Mo personally went to Eva's place to fetch her and the child. Even though her face didn't look good, she reached out to hug the boy and said, let's go back. I'll take care of you in the future. Jared finally looked relieved and went forward to hug Eva. Even though the methods used were not honorable, the outcome was still good. After Mrs. Mo brought Eva back, Jared handed the new medical report. My tumor is benign. The doctor said that it'll be fine after a small surgery. This benign tumor really did exist, but under Kinsey's arrangement, Angela exaggerated the problem in the hospital. Great Immortal is truly powerful. Mrs. Mo hurriedly clasped her hands together and bowed toward the sky, thinking that her decision was correct. At this point, she firmly believed in what the Great Immortal told her and accepted Eva from the bottom of her heart. Jared sent a message to Kinsey in the WeChat group. Thank you, Kinsey. Treat me to hot pot. I contributed too. Ben was the first to jump out. I acted out of friendship. Didn't I act well? Jared adjusted his glasses. Was this the cold and aloof Ben who had tens of millions of fans and young girls clamoring to marry him? Is three meals enough? Jared shook his head and laughed. How loyal. At Jared Ben gave him a thumbs up. Next time you encounter such a fun situation, invite me. At Kinsey. Kinsey, I hope my friends won't encounter such a thing again. In order to further strengthen the effects, Kinsey disguised herself as the great immortal again the next day and continued to appear at that same spot. If Mrs. Mo still had any doubts, Kinsey could reassure her again. Unexpectedly, Mrs. Mo was already certain that her son should be with Eva and did not come again. Chapter 789. Kinsey secretly prayed that Mrs. Mo would not come again. Just as she was thinking about this, she heard a cry from the front. Oh no. Someone, come and help. An old lady fainted. Kinsey quickly ran over to take a look. An old woman with a head full of silver gray hair was lying on the ground. She looked familiar. It seemed that this old woman had been training in the park for the past few days. What happened? Kinsey quickly asked. Someone said, I think she saw her taking medicine before she fainted. Did she have a heart attack or something? Quickly pick up the medicine and feed her another one. Have you called an ambulance? Kinsey asked. T did, but it'll take a few minutes. Because the onlookers were all old people who were doing their morning exercises, they could only watch from the sidelines even if they wanted to help. Kinsey saw that the old woman lying on the ground had turned pale. Seeing that the medicine was only vitamins, she guessed that she must be choking on the pill. Heimlich maneuver could be used to get the medicine out. The Heimlich maneuver was specifically targeted for when a foreign substance was stuck in one's throat. Kinsey had specially learned it so she would know what to do if her children ever choked on something. Sure enough, a moment later, the old woman spat it out and her face instantly recovered its rosy color. Everyone heaved a sigh of relief and said, Ah, this is great. I spat out the pill I took just now. It turns out that it was stuck in my throat earlier. Fortunately, this, this great sage is here. Otherwise, something bad would have happened. The surrounding people saw Kinsey's current outfit and did not recognize her true identity. Kinsey did not expose herself. Seeing that the old woman was feeling better, the crowd gave her some water to drink. If there's nothing else, I'll leave first. Kinsey did not want to cause more trouble and was about to leave. Wait, said the old woman. Kinsey could only stay. The other onlookers were all old people who were busy training and buying groceries. They all scattered. Only Kinsey and the old woman were left. Grandma, is there anything else? Do you need me to send you to the hospital? That's not necessary. The old woman took Kinsey's hand and said, thank you so much for today. I've always been in good health, and these pills are all nutritional supplements. I've taken them every day for more than 10 years. I didn't expect to get one stuck in my throat this morning. I'm too old and careless. Kinsey also noticed that the vitamins were in big pills. She smiled and said, then you really have to be careful in the future. It's best to have someone by your side when you're taking these pills. The old woman smiled. It's all thanks to you. It's nothing. It's nothing. The old woman held her hand. Young man, you're not walking the righteous path and instead pretend to be a great sage every day. Did you encounter some difficulties in your life? Oh no. 
Kinsey muttered in her heart before remembering that she was still dressed as a great sage. She did not meet Mrs. Mo today, but this old woman had exposed her. It was really unexpected. Seeing that Kinsey did not respond, the old woman said, I've been observing you for a few days. I just didn't expect you to be a girl. Have some money with me here. Take it and use it for emergencies. Don't do such things again. Kinsey thought that the ruse she put on with her and Ben was flawless. She didn't expect such an old woman to see through everything. Chapter 790 Grandma, I'm not short of money and I'm not deceiving others. Kinsey definitely did not want to accept her money, so she was very honest. I have my own reasons for pretending to be a great sage. Oh, then tell me what it is. The old woman looked rather noble. Although her hair was grayish silver, it could not hide the wisdom in her eyes. She also seemed determined to repay Kinsey. If Kinsey had any difficulties, the old woman would definitely not sit by and do nothing. Kinsey thought for a while. This old woman seemed to be someone of status, and it was easy for people to have a good impression of her. If she told her about it, she believed that she could keep it a secret. Kinsey then told her everything about Mrs. Mo. When the old woman heard this, she let out an, oh, in surprise. She clearly did not expect that Kinsey was not pretending to be a great sage to cheat people of their money. She was just helping her friends. However, this is still a scam. Even if you can solve this problem for now, it won't last forever, the old woman said calmly. Kinsey smiled. Yes, but don't you think that the real problem is whether my two friends can really be together? As long as they're sincerely together, understand each other, take care of each other, and let a good life together, Mrs. Moe's attitude won't be a big problem anymore. She's just a barrier in between my friend's marriage. After crossing this barrier, it's up to them to see how their lives will turn out. If they can really live happily, I believe that Mrs. Mo isn't the kind of mother who'll make her son suffer. Single quote. The old woman was stunned. It was unexpected that although Kinsey seemed young, she could clearly analyze the situation. She smiled and said, young lady, your words do contain some logic. However, shouldn't your male friend handle this matter himself? When facing your own family, it's inevitable for you to be restrained. It's also inevitable for you to be more tolerant of your parents. This is human nature. I've checked. His mother isn't a bad person, but she's too superstitious. Therefore, it's not a big deal for me to lend a hand to my friend. Furthermore, Mrs. Mo is also very happy now, so why not? Kinsey said logically. She said softly, even if it's my son and he marries a woman with a child, I might feel uneasy. I might worry about whether he'd do well and whether he'd get hurt. I think that there are some things that we should look at from another perspective and put ourselves in the shoes of others. Child, what you said makes sense. The old woman nodded and said, when a person becomes a mother and an elder, their roles change. Indeed, they can't help but think differently from young people. I just didn't expect you to have such thoughts at such a young age. Kinsey smiled. Perhaps with Joshua and Sam, it was easier for her to consider things from a mother's perspective. Kinsey did not know if it was inconvenient for the old woman to go home by herself. Hence, she said, Grandma, let me help you hail a cab and send you home. All right then. The old woman looked at Kinsey. I feel like I've seen you somewhere before. You look familiar. She reminded her of her daughter. Kinsey guessed that she must have seen her in a TV commercial. Chapter 791. It was not the first time that someone found her face familiar. However, the old woman's feeling was not because she had previously watched a TV commercial Kinsey starred in. Instead, she could find that long-awaited feeling when looking at Kinsey. Kinsey accompanied her in the car and they had a simple conversation. The wrinkles on the old woman's face smoothed out. She even hoped the journey would be longer so she could spend more time with Kinsey. They were about to reach their destination when the old woman got out of the car at a street junction. This is it. Then I'll send you down. Kinsey thought that since she had already sent the old woman here, she should just send her to her doorstep. I'm an old woman but I still have some stamina. You youngsters have a lot of things to do, so I won't hold you up. 
The old woman thought for a while and asked, Child, can you give me your phone number? Kinsey readily agreed and gave the old woman her number, but she did not leave her name. Perhaps the old woman would soon know her name. See you around, the old woman said with a grin. By the way, there's no pin on that card. You can keep it for yourself to spend. What? Kinsey did not understand what the old woman meant, but the old woman had already left. Kinsey nodded and waved at her. Driver, please go to this address. Kinsey gave an address. Then, she felt a bank card in her hand. Recalling the old woman's words, Kinsey quickly asked the driver to turn back. It turned out that the old woman had left the card with her. The meaning of her words was to tell her that the card she gave her did not have a pin. The old woman was still worried about Kinsey, so she left the card with her. This was also considered to be a selfish move because of the familiar feelings she felt with Kinsey. When Kinsey returned, the old woman had already disappeared and could no longer be found. There were rows upon rows of buildings all around. It was impossible to tell where the old woman was. Kinsey was secretly vexed. She only gave the old woman her number but did not ask for hers. There was no chance for her to return the card. Holding such a bank card placed her in a difficult situation. The old woman walked home slowly. Jeff and Angela went forward to welcome her. Mom, Grandma. Jeff had a square face, appearing dignified and noble. He was also full of the aura of a middle-aged man who held a high position. He saw the old woman get out of a car, and in that car, there seemed to be someone who looked like a great sage. He couldn't help but frown. Mom, did you go to the temple? Jeff asked. As an important member of Averna, he had never believed in the supernatural. Logically speaking, his mother would not believe in those things either. The Lin family relied on their own abilities to conquer the world since they were founded. They had always believed that fate was in their hands. The only thing he was afraid of was that his mother would believe those things and be deceived. The old woman was old Madame Lewis. She said kindly, no, I don't believe in that either. As for the, great sage, she had explained that she only did so because of her friend's private matters. She asked old Madame Lewis not to tell anyone about it, lest it spread to Mrs. Mo and cause trouble for her friends in the future. Seeing that his mother was unwilling to speak, Jeff was a little worried. Chapter 792. Angela also looked a little worried. Grandma saw Kinsey. She wondered how she would treat Kinsey. Did Grandma know that Kinsey was from the Woods family? Nothing could happen. Otherwise, with the Lewis family's hatred toward Sally, Kinsey would be implicated sooner or later. Jeff turned around and arranged for people to immediately investigate that great sage's identity. To think that someone in the capital city of Averna would engage in such feudal superstitions. Even if they didn't deceive the old madam, it's still a disaster if they're deceiving the elderly. Once we track down that organization that cheats the elderly, we must punish them severely. Jeff instructed his subordinate angrily. Soon after, his subordinate quickly reported the news. That great sage didn't cheat the old madam of her money and doesn't belong to any organization, but, that great sage's name is Kinsey. His subordinate had yet to find out anything else, but Jeff was already furious. Kinsey. He had long heard that the Woods family had recognized a daughter called Kinsey. Initially, he did not intend to look into it. However, he did not expect Kinsey to approach the old madam. She must have ulterior motives, and it made Jeff so angry that his eyes turned red. He recalled how Sally had stayed in the Lewis family with that identity. The Lewis family treated her with sincerity, but she was worse than a beast, did she arrange for Kinsey to get close to the old madam? Did she think that the Lewis family had not been hurt enough? Jeff punched the table. The subordinate had never seen Jeff lose his temper like this. Even though he was a general, he was usually just serious. It was rare for him to be so angry. The subordinate hurriedly said, then I'll continue to investigate. There's no need to investigate. Jeff had a lot of hatred for Sally, so since the matter was related to Kinsey, he already had his answer. This answer was extremely unfavorable for both the Woods family and Kinsey. Kinsey was unaware of all this. That was because she had never paid attention to who Sally's mother was and what kind of family background she had. 
She was filming her final scene in the production team. After a whole day of filming, she received a call from Julia the moment she got her phone. Grandfather is sick. I'll be right there. Kinsey put down her phone and rushed to the hospital. Old Master Woods was lying on the hospital bed. His mental state was not good. Cousin, is Grandpa all right? What did the doctor say? Kinsey rushed over and asked. Old Master Woods waved his hand. Kinsey, come to me. I'm fine. I'm just old. My body isn't as healthy as when I was young. Grandpa, you're still young. How can you say that you're old? Kinsey saw the love in his eyes and comforted him. With you guys around, I feel much better, Old Master Woods laughed. Grandfather, you still need to take care of your health. Why don't you stay in the hospital for a while? That way, everyone can be at ease, Ashley said immediately. Chapter 793 Old Master Woods waved his hand. I still have a lot of things to deal with at home. I have to go back now. Plus, I know my own body. The crowd had no choice but to leave with the old man. Kinsey followed them to the Woods residence. Eldest Aunt Jenny muttered softly, it's all because of that jinx that so many things have been happening at home. What bad luck. Julia tugged on her sleeve. Mom, Jenny couldn't help but ask, did I say anything wrong? If it isn't for her, how could this have happened? Robin interrupted and said, don't talk so much. Isn't the most important thing now to solve the problem? How can we solve the problem? Who will solve it? Do you really think that it's so easy to solve the problem? When the assets are distributed in the future, do you think you'll be given extra shares? I think this kind of matter should be settled by whoever is responsible for it. Ashley could not help but say, all right, cut it out. Grandpa has his own plans. Kinsey was confused. She originally thought that eldest aunt and the rest were talking about her, but when she heard this, she felt that it did not seem like it. She looked at Julia and asked softly, Cousin, what's going on? Didn't we just settle the project on the west side of the city? What's going on with the company? Julia said in a low voice, the Lewis family made a move on our other projects. The two biggest projects of the Woods family now are East Central Square, which was built in the city center, and Jingbei Central Square, which is located in the suburbs. They're both very big shopping malls and are preparing to open for business soon. Jingbei Central Square is a huge investment because the suburbs of Jingbei in the early days was planned to become the entire capital satellite city. It's very worth investing in. But suddenly, the plan changed. They no longer plan to make it a satellite city. The construction of this suburb is about to stop. These shopping malls will become isolated. No one will go there to shop, so construction will definitely be halted. You're saying that it was the Lewis family that did it. Kinsey was shocked. Sally's Lewis family. Other than them, no one else has that kind of power to interfere in such a big matter. No one has so much hatred for the Woods family. Could the Adams family compete with the Woods family for the project in the west of the city last time? It's all because of the Lewis family, Julia told Kinsey. All right, stop talking. Old Master Woods cut her off. Clearly, he had heard everything she said. Jenny said, Dad, you can't be too biased. This matter is clearly targeted at Sally. If something really happens, we won't take the blame. Ashley could not help but retort, back then, the Woods family benefited a lot by relying on my grandfather's family. Isn't it a little too much to say that about my mother now? Then what do you think we should do? We've invested so much money in Jingbei Central Square, and it's been built well. Now that there's no investment plan in that district, do you think we should rely on our Woods family's shopping mall to dominate the entire area? We don't have that ability. Jenny made her stance clear. Old Master Woods snapped. I told you to stop arguing. Only then did everyone quiet down. Kinsey also understood that this matter was the Lewis family's scheme against the Woods family, and the root of it was Sally. Chapter 794. Old Master Woods said, if there's a problem, solve it. Can arguing solve the problem? Dad, how should we resolve this? Jenny was obviously unconvinced, but her tone softened. Sally walked out and said with tears in her eyes, I've let everyone down. I didn't expect the Lewis family to target me like this. 
Big brother, sister-in-law, I don't want to drag you down. Leave it to us to settle. Jenny said aggressively, all right, you guys go and solve this problem about the mall. Leave the new project in the west of the city to us. Isn't that fair? Ashley was infuriated. It's not fair at all. How can the profits in the west of the city be divided like this? What else can we do? Do you want us to clean up your mess? I haven't even fought with you for East Central Square, Jenny pouted and said. Kinsey finally knew why old Master Woods had a relapse. The whole family would nag endlessly over such matters. It was hard for old Master Woods not to have a relapse. She picked up a cup of warm tea and accompanied old Master Woods. She was not interested in these matters nor did she want to be emotionally involved. Jenny said, anyway, the project in the west of the city should be decided reasonably. You two sisters can split the East Central Square and Jingbei Central Square. The moment she spoke, she snatched away the big project. Robin and Sally were not in a position to fight for it. Seeing that things had turned out this way, Ashley said, then I'll be in charge of the opening of East Central Square. Grandpa, this is all I can help you with. East Central Square was located in the heart of the capital city, where every inch of land was worth its weight in gold. The investment was huge, and the construction was grand and magnificent. It occupied the most favorable position, and as expected, once it opened, business would be exceptionally booming. As long as one was not a fool or had a screw loose, one would never incur losses in the business here. As for Jingbei Central Square, it was located in the suburbs. At first, it was the most promising place. However, now that the Lewis family had interfered, it was like a pile of trash. Not only had the piece of treasure become waste, but it would also be a huge problem to clean up this mess. Julia wanted to say something, but her career was focused on Red Owl Entertainment. She couldn't handle such a big mess like Jingbei Central Square. Therefore, she hesitated and could only look at Kinsey apologetically. Now, only Jingbei Central Square was left with no one to manage. Old Master Wood saw that the few of them had already divided the two projects between themselves. The good one had been snatched and only the huge mess was left. He couldn't help but feel depressed. He had really gotten old. He couldn't even suppress his family anymore. He waved his hand. That's all for now. Go back. Jenny could not wait to leave. Seeing that Julia still wanted to say something, she grabbed her hand. Let's go. Julia had no choice but to leave with her parents. Meanwhile, Sally said to old Master Woods with tears in her eyes. Dad, I'm really sorry. It's all because of me. Let's not talk about it anymore. You're all tired. Go and rest. Ashley glanced at Kinsey and gently said to Sally, Mom, don't be sad. I'll accompany you to rest. Kinsey, I've let the Woods family down. I've also let you down. Sally held Kinsey's hand. I didn't expect the Lewis family to do such a thing. Kinsey did not know what to say. After a while, Ashley persuaded Sally to leave. Chapter 795. She followed old Master Woods to his study. Grandpa, what's going on with the Lewis family? Kinsey asked. Old Master Lewis is the founding minister of Averna. Be it in the past or now, he's very famous in the capital. After old Master Lewis and old Madame Lewis got married, they had a son and a daughter. Their lives were very blissful. But many years ago, a maid working in the Lewis family was pregnant with old Master Lewis' child and gave birth to a daughter. That's your mother, Sally. As the maid passed away shortly after giving birth, old Madame Lewis disregarded the past and raised Sally as her daughter. She did not mistreat her. After that, old Master Lewis was injured by a group of villains in an accident, causing him to be paralyzed. Sally served him every day until he passed away. However, not long after, the Lewis family received evidence that your mother, Sally, was responsible for old Master Lewis' injury. However, the evidence wasn't sufficient. After some other matters, the Lewis family and Sally completely turned against each other, Old Master Woods told Kinsey everything in detail. Kinsey asked in surprise, that means my mother is the daughter of the Lewis family's mistress. Although it was a little disrespectful to say that, that was Kinsey's first thought and she even felt a little disgusted. This reminded her of her unhappy experiences in the Miller family. 
Old Master Wood said in a low voice, this is all in the past. I've never interfered in the grudges of the previous generation. Besides, these things would affect the next generation. So, I don't have any opinions about your mother. However, your uncle, Jeff, has always harbored great hatred toward your mother. He would suppress her from time to time, causing the Woods family to rise and fall over the years. Therefore, I can understand why he has more complaints than your aunt's family. I see, Kinsey replied softly. You shouldn't be involved in this matter. You don't have to care about the family matters. Just do your own thing, Old Master Woods said lovingly. I can still settle the matter about Jingbei Central Square. Before he could finish speaking, he coughed violently. It was obvious that his body was not in agreement with his inner thoughts. As Grandpa, Kinsey's heart ached when she saw this. Everyone in the family had their own thoughts. Each of them could not wait to take the greatest advantage and snatch away the best project. On the surface, Old Master Woods appeared dignified, but in reality, he was kind-hearted. He was understanding about most matters. How could he bear all of this with his body? I'm all right, Old Master Woods patted her hand. Ashley also rushed in. Grandpa, are you all right? I'm fine, Old Master Woods replied. Grandpa, with the state your health is in, you don't have to worry about anything else, Ashley said. Why don't we have Kinsey handle Jingbei Central Square? How is that possible? Old Master Woods was shocked. Kinsey doesn't have anything else to do anyway. Besides, we might not be able to make this project thrive. If Kinsey manages it, whatever result she attains will be something miraculous. It might even be effective, right? Ashley said. Actually, she had planned it very well. If she took the central square and Kinsey took the suburban square, it was obvious that she would benefit most out of it. When it came to the matter of inheritance in the future, she would have an excuse. Didn't Kinsey already take it to a square? What right did she have to receive other things? Chapter 796. It could be said that Ashley's scheme was not a good one. Gradually, Old Master Woods could tell that she was full of schemes. She wanted to fight for more, but on the surface, she pretended not to care. Only Kinsey did not fight for anything. What do you think? Kinsey, you should share the burden with Grandpa and the family. I chose the square in the city center because Mom's health isn't good and she needs someone to take care of her. Otherwise, I'd manage the square in Jingbei, Ashley said in a dignified manner. Kinsey looked at Old Master Woods and said, Then, Grandpa, let me handle Jingbei Central Square. Kinsey, Old Master Woods did not want her to take on such great pressure. I have a condition, Kinsey said. Go ahead. We'll try our best to satisfy you. Ashley smiled as she looked at Kinsey. Kinsey brushed her thick hair to the side and smiled at Ashley. If I succeed in reviving Jingbei Central Square, it'll be my own property. I don't want anything else from the Woods family. Ashley didn't expect Kinsey to bring up such a condition. Was there something wrong with Kinsey's brain? Was she stupid? Of course, to Ashley, the sillier Kinsey was, the better. She said to old Master Woods, Grandpa, we can't not give Kinsey anything. Kinsey, do you really only want this? That's all I want, Kinsey said evenly. And I want it written in a contract. She had thought about it. In order to protect Ethan and her two sons, she needed to have enough wealth. When she stood at the peak of the entertainment industry, she would encounter many problems that an artist could not solve. With enough wealth, she would no longer have to fear anything. Besides, with Ethan's capabilities, he would definitely be able to help manage the mall in the suburbs. When that time came, she and Ethan would grow old side by side, facing each other in the world in a better way. If the square was a success, her small family of four would have nothing to worry about anymore. Ashley eagerly invited Old Master Woods's assistant in to write down the contract. After the contract was written, the only thing Kinsey could get from the Woods family was this shabby shopping mall that no one wanted. Everything else had nothing to do with her. Old Master Woods tried to convince Kinsey to give up on the idea several times, but Kinsey firmly raised her pen and wrote her name on the contract. Kinsey kept the contract and left quietly. Old Master Woods was filled with guilt, but he couldn't say anything else. 
Grandpa, I'll definitely do my best and not disappoint you, Ashley promised in front of Old Master Woods. Old Master Woods only felt sorry for Kinsey. She already had enough pressure on her, yet she still had to bear all this. However, the man behind her was someone who could go against the Lewis family. Perhaps he would help her out of her predicament. At night, when Ethan returned home, he saw Kinsey sitting at the desk. She was writing and drawing something. There was a huge pile of documents in front of her. Still reading the script, Ethan walked over and bent down to her neck. No, it's about a newly built mall of the Woods family. Kinsey looked up at him. I've encountered a problem, and I plan to solve it myself. Ethan frowned imperceptibly. Was there no one left in the Woods family? Did Kinsey have to solve the problem herself? Chapter 797 Seeing Ethan's displeasure, Kinsey quickly explained, Ashley passed this responsibility to me, but I really want to handle it myself. This way, when I have money in the future, all. She wanted to say that if she had money, she could take care of her sons while keeping Ethan from being bullied and looked down upon by those people. However, saying that would hurt Ethan's pride. She changed her words and said, Anyway, I have money now. I can do whatever I want. No one can control me. Is it because of me? Ethan saw through her thoughts. Who said so? I'm doing it for myself. Kinsey denied. Ethan sat down with her. For herself. If she really only wanted money, why would she work so hard? Tell me what happened. Kinsey told Ethan about how the Lewis family targeted the Woods family. Ethan had no idea about this. He never cared about other people's family matters. However, from what Kinsey said, if the powerful Lewis family really wanted to make a move on the Woods family, their attacks would be too aggressive and difficult to stop. Kinsey said, so since this mall is basically abandoned by the Woods family anyway, I might be able to counterattack if I stay and handle this project. Grandpa allowed you to split these projects among yourselves. He indeed has his own considerations, said Ethan. The Lewis family has been targeting the Woods family for a long time, so I'm afraid it will be difficult to stop them. However, if the projects are in the hands of the younger generation and the resources are scattered, the Lewis family won't have that much power to target you. Yes, I think so too. The most important thing is that I actually already have some plans for this shopping mall. We can develop it together. If we work together, no one can gossip about us anymore. The image that Kinsey imagined was that she and Ethan would stand side by side in front of everyone to announce that they were a couple who fully supported each other. Don't stay up too late. Ethan ruffled her hair. Hearing her arrangements and imagining the scene, Ethan's heart fluttered. Standing next to her and telling the whole world about the two of them was something he had longed for a long time. Kinsey looked up at him and said, you should rest first. I'll go over soon. No, let's go together. Ethan reached out and pulled her over. Cough, cough, Kinsey always felt that resting with him could not be called resting. Instead, it was tiring. Hearing her cough, Ethan frowned slightly. He was a little worried. You caught a cold. Looks like you really can't be in the kitchen, hey. Kinsey quickly covered his mouth. Let's rest together. Don't talk about anything else. Her face was red. Ethan's lips curved slightly as he held her hand. When Kinsey fell asleep, Ethan got up to look at Joshua and Sam as usual. She wanted to see if the two kids had kicked off their blankets in their sleep. At first, Kinsey was the one doing this, but in order to let her sleep more comfortably, Ethan took over the task. Speaking of which, after Kinsey and Joshua came back, Ethan had much more things to take care of than before. However, everything made him happy and fulfilled. Chapter 798 Back in the room, he reached out to turn off the desk lamp. He found a news article in the newspaper Kinsey had just read. A well-developed female artist had announced the news that she was married to a less popular male artist. This caused the male artist to be questioned, pressured, and attacked by fans. They scolded him for being a freeloader and even tried to pry into his privacy in private. They put all aspects of his life on the table for everyone to laugh at. As a result, the male artist was diagnosed with depression and eventually attempted suicide. The reporter who wrote the news article was at the hospital where the male artist was sent to. 
Currently, the male artist's life and death were unknown. The news was from two days ago. Kinsey had used the tip of her pen to poke many dots on the newspaper. She had probably read it carefully. This incident might have affected her greatly, which was why she was so eager to make more plans for Ethan and their future together. Was that why she took over the mall that no one in the Woods family wanted? Ethan tidied up his things and turned off the table lamp. He returned to the bed and hugged the woman who was sleeping soundly. The woman turned around and found a comfortable position in his embrace before continuing to sleep. Ethan was thinking about what he had just seen. Although the woman's intentions delighted him, the pressure she was under made his heart ache even more. Perhaps, he really should find a time to tell her his true identity so as to prevent her from feeling anxious. However, he could not simply tell her the truth after lying to her for so long. Ethan was also worried. Would the woman be able to accept his unimaginable status? Would she be worried that the two of them weren't compatible? Would she feel pressured? The moment he thought that she might leave, he couldn't help but think more about it. It was rare for Mr. Hunt to lose sleep that night. The next morning, there were some dark circles around his eyes. Although it did not affect his handsome and strong aura, Kinsey still noticed it immediately. Aunt Chen, please buy some black chicken and ginseng today. Make some chicken soup tonight, Kinsey reminded Aunt Chen. As someone who had experienced it before, Aunt Chen understood what she meant. She smiled and said, yes, yes, I've already prepared them. I'll cook it tonight. Speaking of which, ever since Ethan moved into the master bedroom, Aunt Chen had gotten more attentive with the recipes. She had watched young master grow up. Now that he was living a blissful life, she naturally knew how to nourish young master and young madam. Kinsey, you and sir are both busy. You should advise sir to take care of his health, Aunt Chen kindly reminded. Kinsey's face was so red that she didn't know what to do. She coughed lightly and regained her usual expression. I know, Aunt Chen. She had tried to persuade him, but he wouldn't listen. Ethan came out of the master bedroom after changing his clothes. He frowned when he heard their conversation. No man liked to hear such things. He looked at Aunt Chen and said calmly, I worked overtime last night and had to deal with some work matters at the last minute. I only slept at four. Chapter 799. Oh, oh, Aunt Chen quickly said, Sir, you've worked hard. We don't always work overtime. Ethan sat down. Kinsey and I have always taken care of our bodies well. Aunt Chen didn't dare to say anything else. Just now, she even advised Kinsey to have Ethan restrain himself, she knew that she was being too careless. Young Master's health was probably very good. After Aunt Chen left, Ethan looked at Kinsey with some dissatisfaction. Aunt Chen doesn't know my body, but do you not know either? I, I saw that you didn't sleep well. It turns out it's because you were working overtime last night. Kinsey had indeed thought wrongly. Mrs. Hunt, you're very concerned about my health and I know that. However, I can still hold on, Ethan said calmly. Kinsey thought, I might not be able to hold on. I have to film during the day, and I have to look at the mall's proposal at night. How unreasonable. Ethan rubbed Kinsey's hair. You can drink Aunt Chen's black chicken ginseng soup. Kinsey smiled sweetly. When Kinsey went to the production team, she brought along the proposal for the project. Seeing this, Ben was very interested and quickly asked, What are you doing now? Is there anything fun that I can participate in? Here, take a look. Kinsey handed the things to him. Ben took the papers excitedly before putting them down with a sad face. Why are you showing me this? I'm most afraid of this. Why are you reading this? Ethan is using you as free labor. No, this is my family's matter. I just want to help a little, Kinsey said. I'm not talking to you anymore. It's my turn to film. After Kinsey said that, she quickly went to do her makeup. At this moment, someone exclaimed, Wow. He looks like a god. Oh god, am I still dreaming? Quick, pinch my face. Outside the filming set, a tall and slender man with handsome and cold features appeared. He was as bright as the moon. His facial features were as exquisite as a woman's. The mole under the corner of his eye made his beauty even more alluring. The crew had seen many beautiful and handsome men. 
especially with Ben hanging around here every day, everyone's standards for beauty were raised to a very high level. However, the person in front of them easily captured their attention and eyes, making it impossible for them to look away. How can there be such a good-looking man? Ben, forgive me. I'm going to change sides. I'll go back to your side after he leaves. Oh my god, could this be some newbie director Philip found to act in the film? Ah, you've worked hard to descend to the earth. There was a commotion all around, but the man turned a deaf ear to it. He strode to the production team. His expression was cold as if he did not see or hear anything. It was as though the commotion around him had nothing to do with him. As a result, everyone stopped talking. It was as if saying a few words would sully his beauty. Kinsey heard the discussion and did not take it seriously. There were some staff members in the production team who would readily go chasing after stars. They would make such sounds when they saw anyone good-looking. She was already used to it. Chapter 800. Only Ben stood up. B. Boss. Boss, can you not appear in such a place? You'll cause my fan count to drop drastically. Comparisons were odious. Boss, why are you here? Ben hurried over to Nick. In front of this man, the cold and handsome Ben seemed like a lackey. I'm here to visit Joshua, Nick said in a calm voice that reminded one of the skies above. Ben nodded. No wonder he was holding a small doll in his hand. It turned out to be for Joshua. However, Joshua did not seem to like dolls. But who could say for sure? After all, Boss and Joshua had been friends for a lifetime. Perhaps they were different when they were together. Ben quickly said, Kinsey is over there. I'll call her over. No need. His calm tone stopped Ben in his tracks. Nick only sat down and did not plan to see Kinsey. Every time she saw him, she would look like a little rabbit seeing a big bad wolf. There was a hint of fear in her eyes. Rather than seeing Kinsey like that, it was better not to see her at all. He just had to look at her. Ben had a lot to say, so he sat down beside Nick. Boss, you should be more proactive. Didn't I tell you that many times? Why do you always come so late? If you don't take action soon, Kinsey will really be Ethan's. Nick gave him a cold look. Ben felt a chill run down his spine. Did he say something wrong? He didn't say anything wrong. Why was this man's gaze so scary? Ethan was so scary, and so was Boss. What had he done wrong? Nick picked up the documents for the proposal and frowned while going through them. After that, he picked up his pen and wrote down a few comments. When he was done, he calmly looked in the direction of where Kinsey was filming. Meanwhile, the others all looked at this man at the same time. They wanted to know his identity, whether he would stay, and whether he would join the cast. The makeup artist felt that she was about to burst with inspiration. Kinsey was a little surprised. What was going on today? Why did it feel so weird? Why couldn't the crew film properly? What was with these people? Why were they all gathered in one place? When director Philip was finally satisfied, she was exhausted. She took the towel from Luna and started to wipe her sweat. Ben hurried forward. Kinsey, come quickly, come quickly. Why are you here? Look who's here to see you. Ben had always been more proactive in this matter than Nick himself. Anyway, he was a firm shipper of Ben and Nick. No one could stop him from making a move. Kinsey looked in his direction. Who is it? She didn't see anyone. Ben excitedly pointed at where Nick had been sitting and was about to say something when he turned around. He saw that the seat was empty. Hey, hey, where did Boss go? Wasn't he there just now? Kinsey picked up her proposal and smiled at him. I'm done. Goodbye. When she got home, she placed the proposal on the desk and went to take a shower. When Ethan returned, he flipped open the proposal and saw the handwriting that did not belong to Kinsey. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.